Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the One Click Report Generator. In this week's training, I'm going to show you how to create this incredible report in just one click from any table or worksheet data. This is not just any report because this dynamic report includes one click show and hide columns, one click add filters including date range with pop-up date pickers, one click sorting, ascending or descending, one click add total, drag and drop column rearranging, drag to remove columns, edit and user modes, and a whole lot more. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic, unique training that you will just be amazed. So what is the idea behind this week's training? Well, the idea is this, I've got a table or I've got some kind of Excel data and I wanna create a report from it. I wanna have filters, I wanna have sorting, I wanna have display columns and all that, but I want an easy way to do it. Well, now you can. All we need to do is just click create report and it's gonna be done automatically for you in just a few seconds. Here's the report that got created automatically. We can choose to display content columns or hide contents, uh, adding filters, adding date filters, and a whole lot more. So it's going to be an incredible training. I'm going to show you every single aspect. First, we're going to go through the entire training and exactly how it works for those of you who just want to use it. And then I'm going to go into detail and show you exactly how I created it and teach you many, many things on how you can become incredible with Excel VBA. We're going to go over advanced filters, sorting. We're going to use conditional formatting, formulas, and a whole lot more. So I hope you'll stick with us through the entire training. I bring these to you always, almost every other week, hopefully every week soon. We'll do some shorts on that. That's going to be helpful. And I appreciate your continued support on these trainings trainings. So the best way to do that to get notified is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All you need to do is just click the subscription button below. And don't forget that notification icon bell. That'll ensure that you get these trainings. I bring these to you absolutely free. If you like this workbook as a template, you can download it free using the links down below, either with your email or Facebook Messenger. And we're going to get that sent right over to you absolutely free. However, if you do want to support this channel, there are so many ways to do it. One of the best ways is with a brand new course that I've just created, just finished, and that is the Freelancers Academy Masterclass. Now, this particular masterclass is an incredible masterclass teaching you all of the unique skills that have helped me over the last 30 years become an advanced and accomplished freelancer. And I'm going to go with you the nine phase method in this course. It's an incredible course, not about Excel, but it's about everything else, all the important stuff. Now, here I'm going to teach you Excel, but that's not enough. I want you to become accessible. This Freelancers Academy Masterclass is going to help you do that in my proven nine phase method. I'll include the link down below. I would really appreciate it. All right, let's get right to this training because I've got so much to to show you here. It's going to be a long, comprehensive training. We're going to show you everything, so make sure you grab your beverage of choice, get ready, and where we go. Okay, so what do I have here? Well, basically, what I have is I've got some databases, just some basic databases, customer lists, and basic in orders. Now, regardless of your type of data, you're going to be able to do this. So if we're on customers here, all you need to do is just right-click anywhere on the sheet, anywhere on the sheet you want. We're just going to click Create Report. And what that's going to do is going to create a brand new sheet, and it's going to replace any existing sheet with the same name and what's going to do is going to take all that data it's going to create a little report now if we click finish editing we're going to have just this report and we can do date range we can do different filters and formats we can do so much now when we want to edit the report maybe we want to have we don't want to show our customer maybe we notice we have a filter by this customer id maybe we don't want to show that so if we want to hide it all we do is unclick the display here this check is going to hide that check mark. If we want to have a hide other items, we can just by simply selecting it. This is going to hide and show columns. Maybe we don't want to see it. Or maybe we want to filter by, we want to add some filters on that. So we want to filter by name. Maybe we want to filter by, let's say type. So we want to add a filter. So we just click these and it's going to add a filter. And as soon as we do that, if we click here and we just go ahead and click lead, it's going to then filter that based on those leads. So we have it filtered based on that. We can clear the filter to do that. So any type of filter we add is going to automatically do that. Now maybe we want to set a default sort by. So we click start date. Let's say we do type. We want to sort by type. I'm just going to sort by type 
Here it is ascending. And what maybe we want to do it descending. We can click here. It's going to automatically do descending. We can also do the same exact thing with the header. If we finish the editing, we want to click the header. We can click it once. It's going to do it ascending. Another time, it's going to do it descending just by clicking on the header. Now, that's going to go with anything. So we have that ability to do that. And for larger columns, it's going to show that marker here. Really great way to quickly sort that. So also what we want to do is we may want to, again, filter by day. We can do that either with this pop-up date picker or we can do it with the two from date. Now this filter by here, when we edit that report, we're going to say, well, what do we want to filter by? Now let's say we put the start date in. We're now filtering by the start date. So depending upon the different filters, we can filter by start date. And for example, let's take a look at the orders report. In the orders report, we have an order date and we have a due date. Maybe we want to filter by due date. So we click here. Now we can only filter by one date at a time. That's best. So this filter here now becomes filter by due date. So we can filter by the date here, one specific date at a time. So that's really going to be helpful, filtering out your data by whatever you want. So continuing on, we can sort two methods. We can sort, this sets the default sort here, or we can sort by clicking on the header as you saw there. So that's kind of a nice way to do it, just clicking on the header. Now, if you're in edit mode, notice that we're in edit mode because this is visible. So if we finish editing, we can do it here. Now, if we're in edit mode, we also have the ability to move columns. Let's say we want to move a column here. We just bring it over here and that's going to switch the name and the status column. So all we need to do is drag it. Now we can also hide columns. If we want to hide a column, maybe I don't want to see order date. I can just drag it directly over here into the hide and that's going to hide that column. It's basically the same thing. It's just simply clicking or unclicking here. So if I check here, it's going to hide it. Okay. So that's really great. Now, why do we have this edit mode here. Why is that important? Because let's say you add user security that you want some users to be able to edit the, your report and some users don't. So what you would do is set up some kind of user insecurity. So when we finish editing, now when you click edit report, it would ask for a user password. Now that's something that we can do. Maybe we'll add that on Patreon if it's something that you want to see. Let me know. I can do that on Patreon. However, there's so many ways we can update this. So you may want to have some users not be able to edit the report. So it's nice you have a finalized report here, but maybe we want to add some totals. We got total amounts. Maybe I want to add some totals in that. All I would need to do is just click this total column and click here, total here. And it's going to automatically add totals in here. No matter what, they're automatically added in here. So when we finish editing the report here, you see those totals are automatically here. Very, very helpful for our purposes here because we have totals that are always going to be here. Let's say columns in which are financial or numbers or any type of thing, we can do that. Really, really helpful on this. We can refresh the report, which is going to refresh report data, although we can just change the filters and that's, if we want to add additional filters, all we need to do is edit report and just select here. So that's kind of the gist of it. Now these get created automatically, right? So from any table, whether it's customers or orders or any other table that you have, all you need to do is just right click and then create that report. All right, so what's, what do we have for the admins and settings? We've got a date format here. So this is gonna help us when we have a date column such as due date, or maybe we have order date, when we create that report, we want a very specific format for those dates, right? So if we take a look at our column dates here, our column dates here have specific formats, but I wanna set the precedent on that format. So when this report gets created, what date format will be used? So the best way to do that is set a specific format here. This is called our date field. And this format's going to be used when we create brand new reports. It's gonna look, it's gonna determine what type of column this is. And then what we're going to do is going to determine it's a date. Now, when we create this report here, let's go back to the, it is already going to assume the format, although we can change it. We see order ID is a number. We see that order date is a date. Now we can change this if we want to, but the format's already set. So I know when this report gets created, it is gonna use this date format for the order date. So that's gonna help us format those columns appropriately. This is an amount, the payment, the count as a text, the totals amount and balance. So this really helps. Now, Excel and VBA are pretty good at figuring out based on the current data, what the format is. However, if it's wrong, if we guess it wrong in VBA, when we create that report, you can always change it here. And that's gonna change it throughout the report. So what format's gonna use? It's gonna use this for the amount. 
It's going to use this for the number format, and it's going to use this for the percentage. So we have our predefined formats. A list of those field types are here. If you see, it's called field types. There's a list. This is the same data validation drop-down list that are used in our report field types here. So it's the same drop-down list. It's just the data validation drop-down. Okay, so what do we have? This is pulled in directly. Let's go back to the admin screen. I just want to go over a few other things. We've got a list of our sheet names. That's going to be helpful, and I'll show you why. And then just basically a row column number. We may or may not use that too much, but I have that in here. So the idea is this. When this screen is created, the users can set the source data sheet, although Excel pretty much knows what sheet it is, so it may not be, but in case it's wrong or something, we can set it to whatever data sheet we want. Very helpful. We can set a very specific name for the report. Let's say customer report. Maybe I want to change that, customer report. And so it's going to change it automatically on a report here, which is kind of nice. So you see that. So if I want to change, let's just say I want to change it to balance report, maybe Maybe I want to change it to customer balance and I want to put in caps customer balance. So to do that, it's going to automatically change it up here. So that's kind of nice. We can change the header through this. It's going to assume the first column of data from our database is right here. So for our first column of data is in column A, that's column one. We need to assume it to know what our first column of data is. So we have that in column one. Our last column of data, if we take a look here, our balance, this is column 13. It's our last column of data. That's important. I also want to know what row the header row. It's on row two. Our headers are on row two. So we need to know that when we create this. And that's going to be our header row two here. And our required column, which is the first column. And then we have that. So that's would be like our order ID or our customer ID. That's the particular column that is required for every field. Okay, so that's our header information. Of course, I'll show you how we generate that, but that's kind of the idea. Then what we have is a table header name. Now, these are the names that come directly from our database. But what if I want to change it in our report? Well, all I have to do is just make this update to customer name. And it's going to update automatically in the header as soon as I click the update report. Now it says customer name. So we can have custom header names. So it's going to be really helpful to customize those reports for your purposes. We also have the order. This is the order of the column. When we drag and drop, this keeps track of the order. It's always going to be from one to the last column. So this order will help us when we sort it. It's going to always be from one to the column. Displaying columns will show or hide the column based on a selection change. When we make that selection change, it's going to show or hide those columns. Filter is going to add that filter. If I want to add by filter, I can just simply click here and add that. Now, date filters are a little bit different. Date filters, when we click on order date, right, one order date, it's going to be able to, if I unselect it, that uh, date range, notice that shape of dates is gone. But if I select it again, it's going to show up. We can filter by order date. So this filter by order date from and to this date range here is only going to be there for date type filters. If I don't have any date filters, I can then just remove it. If I want to add that date filter, I can just do that right here. It's going to add that date filter here. Okay, great. So we understand that the sort by is the default sort by as soon as it gets refreshed. What sort by do I want it descending, which is the arrows up, or ascending, which is the arrows down here? That's going to default whichever column. So that way, when it gets refreshed, it's automatically going to be sorted by that type of column. We can also sort by any, again, just by selecting there. So that's kind of it. And of course, we can total any column, especially amount or numerical columns, just by selecting here. It's going to display that total here. So that's in essence of what we're trying to do, right? We basically want to create a very dynamic, very user-friendly report in a very quick and easy manner using any type of table or data. Now, I noticed this. We're not using tables. This is just a range, basically. Notice this create report. However, if I were to create a table, let's go ahead and create a table here. I did notice one kind of sticky point, which is kind of funny. If I just change this to two and create a table on that, notice that that right-click showed up, right? Now, if I right-click here, that menu item is not there on a table. However, if I click on anywhere else on the sheet, it shows up, but not on a table. Maybe one of you sleuths can figure that out for me. I didn't get a chance to research that. Why on a table, the right click doesn't show up. However, off it, it does show up. So I just use ranges. I, I prefer ranges, as you may know. But uh, so what we'll do is just convert it to a range. I'm just not a big fan of tables, unless I'm creating dashboards. For dashboards, it's really nice. Uh, if I'm not using a dashboard, generally, I don't use a table. Do I want to go back to normal range? Yes. So now as a normal range, that shows up. So right-click, event. So 
that's basically it. So it's relatively simple. We have a template here. Now this is the eventually template. There doesn't need to be any data in here. That was just some testing, right? So this is the template. So for every single table that we have, when we create a brand new report, this particular template sheet gets duplicated. So this is the template here. This gets duplicated. So we have one for the customer report. We have one for the order report. So all we need to do, and then we have just another sheet for the calendar pop-up. So we're not going to go into much detail. This particular sheet is used for the calendar pop-up. So we saw that little calendar pop-up right here. So it's used for the formulas in that. So that's what that other sheet is. We won't be going in. This is enough of a training as it is. So we won't have that. We can clear any filters just by clearing the filter. It's going to refresh that. And of course, we can reset the report fields if we want to reset it back to the original. Maybe we've made changes on here. Or we want to reset it. We can do that here. Updating would be update any headers here if we want. And we can also finish editing. So I like this really ability to create reports very quickly. Now for our Patreon members, what I'll probably do is add a lot more features. If you want to get on Patreon, I'll include the link down below. I include lots of other features, fixes, or focus on any area. I'll probably be adding print report, email report, or anything else you want. Let me know what you want to see on our Patreon, and I'll be adding that onto this template. For each and every training I do, I create an additional training video. I also created an additional, an updated workbook with all those new features, and that's only on our Patreon platform. So make sure you join us there. We got a lot of people over there. They really love what they're getting for every single training. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go uh, step by step through the code. I hope you'll stick with us. I'll try to move slow, but there's a lot to cover, right? There's a lot of code behind this, but you're going to learn some amazing things. Even if you're new to VBA, it's okay. I'm going to go slow in most parts unless we're repeating. And I'll try, you're welcome to watch this video as slow as you want and back as many times as you want so that you get the concepts and all the tricks and techniques that I'm going to be using inside this. We have an overall idea. So why don't we start with this? Let's go ahead and start. The first thing what I want to do is I want to show you how do we create this right click functionality and how do we get this particular icon to show up on this right click menu. And of course, it's tied to a macro that's going to do that. So the first thing is this right click. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the developer in Visual Basic. You can do Alt F11. That will get you there as well. Inside this screen, we have some workbook function. So we're going to click on workbook, this workbook here. That's what we're going to take our first focus on. And the first thing what we want to do is we want to create some command bars on right click. So right click is what we're doing. And we want to create some command bars. That thing that you saw is called a command bar. That button there that you saw here, that's a command bar. And so we want to add a brand new one. So to do that, first thing we want to do is every time we add a new one, we also must delete it. So when we deactivate the workbook, when I mean deactivate, it means I go to another workbook or I deactivate it and move or close it. I want to make sure that that particular item that I got created on that menu gets deleted. So to do that, if it doesn't exist, it could create an error. Therefore, we're going to wrap it in on error, resume next, and on error, go to zero. We're just going to delete the command bars, and we're going to give it a very specific name called create report. So any particular control, menu item control, that has that name, create, we're simply going to delete it. So that deletes it. But what about when I want to create it? So when I do, we're going to create an event called workbook sheet before right click. Now you can find that inside the workbook events here, workbook. And then before right click. So what we're going to do is we're going to, that macro has been added. Now it's by value sheet object or target is range or cancels Boolean. So we can do those options. So we're going to dimension the command button. We need to create a brand new command bar button. So that's what we're creating a command bar button. And again, we're wrapping it in on air, resume next and on air, go to zero in case there's any issues. First thing we want to do again, just again, is we don't want to create duplicates. If we create duplicates, it's, it doesn't replace it. So every time we add a new one with this, it's simply going to add and add. So the first thing we want to do is again, delete anything with that specific name, deleting that. And then what I want to do is I want to actually create it. So we're going to set the command button. We've already dimensioned it up here as command bars, cell, that's a single button. Controls, we're adding a brand new one. Temporary equals true. Before one, what does that mean before one? That means I want to be the first item here. Notice it's the first item. If it's before two or before three, it'll be down here. But I want it as the first item. So before one is the position that I want it at. And what kind of type of button is it going to be a control button? Control button, that's what I want to create. So this creates it. And then what are we going to do with it? I want to do some things with it. One, I want to give it this icon here, this little report icon. 
Two, I want to give it a name. And three, I want to assign a macro to when the user clicks it. So we're going to do all three of those things. The first is giving it that caption, that text called create report. Then what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little button ID called face ID 6200. Now this particular number pertains to a very specific ID on a PDF. And now basically we need to assign a specific icon to this face ID. So where do we get that? Well, I downloaded a PDF and I'll include it for our Patreon members as additional download. But basically it is this here it's called the face id excel 2021 pdf and it's got all the numbers so basically i just looked for 6200 when i found one i looked through all these i found one that could probably look pretty decent and as you can see right here 6200 this is the one i chose and so what i'll do is i add that that's the one so whenever when you want to add something to that i've got a whole list of icons here you can choose so that number pertains to that icon then what i want to do is the third thing is i want to assign a macro to that when the user clicks something happens and that's called on action create report sheet so this is the macro that i use to create that so that's all we need to do to create that right click functionality the only important thing is we want to make sure to always delete it when we're deactivating or going to another workbook and deactivating it before we create a new one so that's pretty much it so this particular macro create report sheet that's the first macro that we're going to go into and it's in this module here called new report macros new report macro so if we take a look up here we have one called create report sheet now i've got a host of variables that we're going to be defining as we move through the application i don't need to read you all these but basically that's all we the few things most of them are long variables we have a list name as the name and we have some report sheet as a worksheet and current worksheet and the report sheet those are both going to be worksheets okay so here's what's going to happen so what do i want to happen when i right click on this what do i want to do well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to determine some information about our data. I want to know what the first column is. I want to know what the last column is. I want to know what our header row is. And I want to know the name of the sheet. The name of the sheet is called orders. So I want to put all that. That's very important because we're going to need to put that inside our brand new sheet. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this report. No, first of all, then what I'm going to do is, is if there's already a sheet called orders report, I need to delete it, right? I don't want to create multiple sheets. So the first thing I want to do is check for this sheet. If it exists, we're going to delete it. We're going to create a name. So basically all I'm going to do is take the name of the database and I'm going to add an underscore and then report. Then I'm going to create a brand new sheet. However, if it exists already, we're deleting the sheet. Now we're creating a brand new sheet, but we're going to use an existing sheet to duplicate it. So this sheet called report template report template which has a lot of the features all we're done has got conditional formatting and a lot of the features all we're going to do is duplicate it this sheet is going to act as our template this way we can create multiple sheets or unlimited sheets per workbook which is very helpful so i'm going to be duplicating that then what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to take in all the header names i'm going to put it here i want some information here as far as the column numbers and so on and so forth so that's going to really help us out so that's what we're going to do first thing inside this macro so let's go over this macro and take a look and then what i want to do is to make it faster we've got a macro called app events stop now if we take a look inside the report sheet macros very quickly this app event stop and app event start what this is going to do is going to turn off events it's going to enable events like selection change worksheet change those types of events i'm going to turn it off temporarily that's going to speed up our application i'm going to turn off calculations to manual and i'm going to turn off screen updating now once we do this inside a macro before the macro ends we want to make sure that we turn everything back on basically do the opposite of what we just did so we're going to run this macro called app event start and basically we're going to turn on events again we're going to turn the calculation back to automatic and we're going to turn screen updating to true so you'll see a lot of this inside the macros as we do it because this is going to make things a lot quicker so you'll see here we're stopping it but by the end of the macro we are going to start it back up again I'm running this okay so when you see that okay so that's the first thing what we want to do now we're going to focus on our want to clear the previous sheet what i'd like to do is as we add sheets i want this list this list of sheet name to automatically be updated okay so i want to clear this list out and i want to add them up because i want the user to be able to adjust or change the sheet the database sheet when you go into the orders report maybe the user has a different database that they want to specify so they can do that right here so if they want a different database they can change the database here so maybe we want to change it to orders or something like that they can do that but i need this in a data validation list if we take a look inside the data validation we see this list is called workbook sheets and it's going to refer to this 
This is the workbook sheet. So it's a dynamic named range. So if we go into the formulas and name manager, we see that we have in here worksheets, workbook worksheets right here. And it's basically a dynamic named range. What we're going to do is we're going to start out at four. We're going to count all the text from all. So that basically that's going to be create a list of worksheets that we have. It's going to help us. So that's the first thing we want to do is I want to make sure that this list gets updated first by clearing it out, then by looping through all the sheets in the workbook and populating this list again so that we have an accurate and updated list of worksheets within the workbook. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is I want to clear everything out inside that column. I want to set the initial sheet row to four and because we're looping through. So I want four and then we'll increment the row for every new worksheet. So to do that, we need to set that initial row as four. So here what we're going to do is we're going to loop through every sheet in the workbook. Now, here we say worksheet. This is dimension as a worksheet. So therefore, when we loop through every worksheet in sheets, meaning the workbook, well, what I want to do is I want to update I along with the sheet row. This is going to get incremented. It's starting at four. I'm going to update that with the name of the worksheet. So this is going to add name of worksheet. Okay, so once we have that, we're going to increment the row here and then we're just going to loop through that. So what this is going to do is going to add basically every worksheet inside the workbook into a named range. Very helpful moving forward. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Next up, what I'd like to do is I want to focus on the active sheet. Remember, that particular database is our current active sheet. What do I need to do? I need to get the first column, I need to get the last column, and I need to determine the header row. So to do that, we're going to do the following. The database name, the name of the database, we're going to set that default to the active sheet name. That's going to set the database, the table name. Also, what is the last column? I need to determine the last column. What we can do is we can use the active sheet. We probably don't need this because we're already on the actor sheet nor do we need this because we're already set on with actor sheet here we're going to do a to z what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a1 to z5 i want to find the last column so we're going to take the first five rows all the way to, so let's just say here and i want to determine the last possible row up to let's say a z probably a z okay uh, after that, we're going to use these for our advanced filter criteria and advanced filter results, which are going to be after that. So up until that point, that's going to allow us about uh, 52 different columns for our database. All the way, I should probably make this AZ and hey, give us more space. Okay, so AZ, what we're going to do is look in that range. What we're going to do is we're going to find anything anything inside that range. I'm going to search by columns. I want to search direction previous, right? So I want to go from back to previous here. And what I want to do is I want to return the column. What is the last column with any type of value? That's going to return the column. That's going to get our last column. So we're going to search this range, A1 through AZ. Searching all of these, we're searching previous. So we're starting here and we're going all the way back. Once we get to this, this is the column with the last value. Notice it's got values here, any value there. And it's going to return the column. So what that's going to do is return column 13 into the last column. Okay, we're going to set the first column default to one, in this case defaulting, but it could change. And we're going to set the column count defaulting to zero. So we want to default that. Now what I want to do is I want to get that header row. I want to know what row is in the header. So that basically the best way to do that is search all the rows and find the first row that contains as many values as possible. So in other words, if this has, let's say 13 values and this has 12 and this has 11 or this has 13, even if this has 13, this was the first one we found with all all the most values so that's going to default to our header row so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to run a little bit of a loop for the database row equals one to five we're going through each one of the rows what i want to do is i want to find the row with the largest number of values so we're going to use the application worksheet function count right we're counting all of the cells in that range and we're going to do we're going to determine that what is the count of those if the count is greater than the column count, it starts out at zero. If it's greater than the column count, then we're going to keep track of it. Then it's going to be our header row equals the database row. So the first header row is going to be one. Okay. Then what we're going to do, the second row is going to go move to two because two has more values than one. So then it's going to, what about three? If three has the same number or it has less, then it's going to stay on number two. What does that mean? So if we look here, the header row, we're going to set the default. Now we're going to set the column count is equal to the number in the next row. So how many there? So we're just going to reset it there. So we only want to change the header row to the database row. We only want to change the header row 
only if the counting, the count of the current row is greater than the column count, if it's greater. So basically we're looking for the first row that contains as many values, the most values with a row, and then the first one's gonna be default. So basically, that's gonna help us determine which one's the header row. Even if row three and row four had all of the values here, if they were all filled up, this would be the first row that had all those values. So still row two would be maintained. So we know that row two is probably the header. It's just gonna help us assume that row two. So that's all that this section is gonna do. It's just gonna help us determine what is actually the row of the header. And of course the users can make that change, right? If it gets wrong, they can make that change to any one they want here. Okay. So continuing on. So once we do that, what I want to do is I want to clear any previous results. Now we're going to be adding additional criteria and additional results, but if there is anyone that got added, I want to basically remove it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to clear everything from here to here. We're going to go over this a little bit later on, but as we add a new database, I want to make sure everything is cleared out in case we're creating multiple reports or something like that. We want to clear it out. Okay. So to do that, we're going to clear out BA of the current sheet two all the way through dz that's going to clear out any previous criteria that we'll be using for our advanced filter and the results of that criteria so here's our criteria here that we'll be going over a little bit later and here's the results of that advanced filter i want to clear all of that out especially important in case we create it again okay so then what i want to do is i want to set those header results what are the results of those headers so range ca2 i'm going to set that basically what i'm going to do is just going to take set some default results right here just going to set those copy that and just going to bring it over into ca2 so that's going to set our results because initially we want all the results to show up here in the order so i'm going to set those results right here all we're going to do is just then take that last column minus the first column, the number of columns, and it's going to be equal to whatever is in that header row and the first column, the header row. So this sets the results headers. It's going to be used later on and we'll be updating in case we change the order, but this sets the initial result here. That way, when we run our advanced filter, all the results will come here. I'm going over that a little bit, but basically what we want to do is just set that default result header. We want to make sure that we run an advanced filter. The header names in our results are always exactly the same. It can be in a different order. It's going to be always exactly the same as our header names right here. We want to make sure that they are accurate. So that's going to help us there. So that's focusing on the active sheet. We got all the most information and we put in information that we really need is the database, the last column, the first column. Column, and of course that header row those are really essential moving forward now we're ready to focus on our report sheet the first thing what I want to do is I want to turn off application display alerts equals false why do I want that because when I delete a database sheet it's gonna say are you sure that we're gonna get a message pop-up says are you sure you want to delete this sheet I don't want that message pop-up to come up I don't want to force the user to say okay I want it to happen in the background so if we want to turn off that alert we can use application display alerts equals false we just need to make sure we turn it right back on so what we're going to be doing and also we have on error resume next right we cannot delete a sheet if it doesn't exist if it doesn't exist it's going to create an error however if we wrap it in on error resume next and on error go to zero there will be no error created there'll be no alert created so this is going to delete any sheet if it exists already and remember i said if we're going to create that orders report sheet i got to make sure that it doesn't exist already if it does delete it because we're creating the same report okay continuing on so once we know it's been deleted we're ready to then create a copy of that so we're going to do sheets report template this is the template report template sheet that i want to copy and i want to create a copy of it or duplicate it and i want to put it directly before the database sheet right so i want to create that order sheet right here and i want to put it directly before the order so we have the orders table here and the orders report get created here so it's going to put it right there before that that's where the location where i want to place that new sheet then what I want to do is I want to give it a very specific name. That name of that brand new sheet, which is now the active sheet, right? We've created it and it's become as soon as we copied it, as soon as we run it, this new sheet became the active sheet. So the name of that active sheet is equal to the name of the database orders and the underscore and report. So this sets the new name for the new sheet. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with this sheet. So I'm gonna set that brand new sheet, report sheet, is simply equal to this workbook sheets 
database name and the report. So we've taken that brand new sheet, that active sheet, and we set it to this report sheet. We can work with it with this. So now we can focus on that brand new sheet with report sheet. Now, what do I want to do? Well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to clear any data that might exist. So D7 through K99. So D7 here, we should probably make that C. I'm going to make that C just in case there's any data here. All the way through K, I want to just want to clear anything out that might exist in the template. So we want to clear, although it's all cleared out, but just in case there's anything there, I want to make sure we clear it out. And I'm going to make that from, I'm going to set that to C actually, because C is going to take on our column header. So we're going to, I'll show you that right now. So now what I want to do is inside this brand new sheet, I want to populate. I want to put in the source data sheet. I want to put in the name, the first column, the last column, the required column, and the header row. So all six of those values must go inside this brand new sheet. So we can do that with the fellow. So E2 is going to take on that database name i'll drop this down here so you can see it uh e3 is going to take on the database name and space report so that's that default report name which users can change in e3 g2 is going to take on that first column g3 the last column we're going to set the default required or control key column to one i2 that's in case that first column and then i3 is going to take on that header row and also j7 i want to set the first column to four i want to set that sort by in that first column so j here it's going to take on that column so what i'm going to do j7 equals what does it equal it equals uh, character 75 now what is this character 75 and how do i get it well the first column is if we take a look inside here we see and we go into the home we see that this is the wingdings three so that's where i found this particular double arrow up or double arrow down so how would i find that character number so if i insert a symbol and i take a look at this symbol if i look at let's go into wingdings right you can see it down here but wingdings 3 is where i found it so we'll take a look at wingdings 3 and you can see both here we have this up arrow or the down arrow so these characters particular characters have numbers associated with them so if i select here we see that this is wingdings 74. if i select here we see this is wingdings 75. so that's where i get that number now these fonts don't necessarily work inside vba but they always work when we use the character i get some complaints that say hey this you know it's not working in my version of vba use the character number and you won't have an issue so that's what i do early on many years ago i used to use the characters and a lot of people have problems with different workbooks so now i just use the act the character number such as character so for example this checkbox let's go ahead i want to show that to you one more time so we'll go ahead and insert that. And then I want to insert the symbol here. So this checkbox is 252. So if the checkbox uh, format doesn't work in your VBA, just use the character. And to do that, all we need to use, just use CHR and then 75 or the number associated with that. So that's what I want to use. So basically we're going to set this character on J7, J7, that first column is going to be sorted ascending. So that's all we want to do here. First column default to sort ascending. Okay, that's going to be it with that sheet. Now what I want to do is I want to run a bunch of macros. Now these macros individually will go over. So basically all we did is populate this section and set this as a for salt. So what I want to do now is I want to run some macros that's going to add the information here. I want to loop through that. So I put them in separate macros to make it a little bit easier. So let's take the first macro. So we've got six different macros that's going to show five different macros plus the app event start. So the first one is update database fields. We're going to run a macro to update those report fields, right? We haven't yet put in these report fields here, but we need to add them in. So let's go ahead and do that. So all I need to do here is just right click here and then go to definition. And what that's going to do is going to lead us directly directly to this module here called report update structure report update structure macro so this is the ones we're going to be focusing on we have different macros so report update report here we've got update report fields so we're going to go over each one individually but we're starting out directly with this one the update the database fields that's the one i want to show you so inside this updates database fields again we're going to stop the calculation screen updating and calculations turning that off we'll turn it on before we leave we're going to focus on this active sheet that's the report that we're focusing on the report sheet now what i want to I want to take these particular items and put them into variables the database name the first column the last column the header row 
and the field row, the initial field row seven, our field row, our first row seven, we're gonna go all the way down, but we need to set that initial row to seven. So I'm gonna take all this information, putting it into variables here. So the database name is a string variable, first column, last column, and header row are all long variables, putting them in. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to loop through all the database columns. I wanna know, if I know the first column is one and the last column is 13, I wanna loop through all these columns. I wanna extract the names and I wanna put those names directly inside our custom report right here. I also wanna put the column number here. The column is associated with, I'm gonna put that in C and that eventually can be hidden if we want and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so that's really what I want to do is loop through all the columns. So I want to get the field name. This is a string variable. Where is it going to come from? That field name is going to come directly from the header row in column one of the first column. So we're going to run that loop. So that field name sheets the database name, the header row. Remember, that's the header row and the database column. The database column is going to be looping from one to the last column. We're going to set the first one as the field name. And I also want to know what is the format, right? So I want to get the format. Maybe it's a number format. Maybe it's a date format. So I want to extract the format, at least from the first column. I know this is a date format. So what I want to do is I want to look inside this format here. What is the format of the cell? We see here that it's a date format. We're taking a look at the customer ID and we see here it's a number format. So I want to extract that because that's going to help us determine what format to use right here. So we're going to extract that and put that into a variable. We're going to call it field format. So to get that, we're going to go into the database name here. We're going to go to the header row plus one. That means the first row of data as we loop through the data columns. And I want to take whatever the format of that cell, whatever the format, and I'm going to put that format directly inside something called field format. Okay, so now what we want to do is I want to convert the format, whatever format it is, to either text, date, number, amount, percentage or text, right? So either one of those, so general or anything else. So to do that, we just can use a few ifs then statements, a little bit easier to do that. We could use select case on there, but if then just work just fine. If the field format equals general, we're gonna make it text. If the if now we're gonna check for date, how do we know it's a date? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look inside this format, I'm gonna look for an M. If we take a look, inside this and we go into the home and we see it's a date right but we go into the more number formats and we use custom we see that this format has m backslash d y y so most date formats have an m inside there so that's a great way to determine that it's a date format we know it's an m could be minutes it could be a time though but at least it's it's a good way to determine that right that it contains a single m maybe we could use year or date or something like that so that's going to be very helpful so we're going to assume that if it contains an m we could be wrong but it's a good safe assumption that if that field format contains an m inside the format it's probably a date format so we're going to set the field type type, which is another string variable, to date. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to look and determine the number. If the field format equals zero or 0.0, .0 or 0.00, .00, it could be a number format. If we take a look inside here, we go into the home. This is a number format, man and more number formats. And we go to the custom, we see the type is zero. Could be 0.0. .0. So that's going to give us a kind of a safe assumption that it is a number format. So to do that, we're going to assume that it is a number. We're going to set that field type to number. However, it contains a dollar sign, and here's where you'd replace it with your currency symbol. If, if you've got a different currency, you could replace this with whatever currency symbol, and if your format contains your currency symbol, it's probably an amount field, so we can change that. Also with percentage, we're gonna look inside the field format, if it's contained inside, remember we're checking that format. We're using the in string function inside that format. If it contains that percentage, that means that particular percentage is found inside that string. We know that it's a percentage. So we're going to set that to percentage. If it's checked all these and it's still a blank, if the field type is still empty up until this point, we're going to set the field type to text, right? So we're going to check all these. If it's not found, we're simply going to default it to text. And so now we've determined the field type. This is really important because I need to set as I loop through these, I need to make sure that we set this particular one in column F as to whatever the field type is. So we've determined that now. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is in column C, we're going to set that original database column. Notice column C is going to take on that original database column here. D is going to take on the field name. E is also going to take on the field name. However, the user can change what's in E because E is going to be what's going to show up in the report header. And yet the label within the database remains the same. So we can have two different labels for that one for the report and one for the database. Also, then we're going to have the report header name. That's going to go in E. F is going to take on the field type. We'll put that inside F. G will take on the field row. Now I want to know what the order is. I want to set a default order, an original order. So basically, if the field row is seven, which it is, and if we subtract six, it's going to go to one. So we know that the order is going to set that initial order in column G to one. So as we loop through, it's going to go one, two, three. So that sets our initial order. When we decide to move and change column headers, it's going to change this order. So we might choose from four to three or three to four. When we Then when we sort this, it's always going to be sorted in order. Okay, So that's going to help us keep track of the order. Then what I want to do is I want to set the default display. I want to orig originally or initially, I want to make sure that all columns are displayed. So setting this to character, remember I showed you that check mark. 252 is the character equivalent of that check mark, and that is going to be here. So we see that this particular check mark inside the Wingdings font, character 252, is going to display that character. So here we have these columns filtered by display column and total are all the Wingdings font because we're going to be using that check mark. However, the sort by, we're going to use that special character. That is going to be the Wingdings 3 because we need to use that special character. So we're going to set that default as check for the initial. And then what I want to do is I simply want to increment the field row. So it's going to go from 7, 8. For each one, we're simply incrementing this all the way to the last row. So we're simply going to loop through all the database columns and add all of that data. And we're going to restart that. So that's the initial one, report uh, update database field. So that's the first macro that we're going to go through inside this so remember this is our brand new macro that we're going to create every time we create a brand new sheet first macro that we create is called update database fields that's the macro i went then what i want to do is i want to update the column headers update the column headers i got a macro for this too called report update column headers when we click on right click go to the definition we see also in our update structure here we have something called report update column headers now what do we want to do with this we want to then basically create these individual headers now these are shapes if we take a look at these these are shapes not cells now how are we going to do that well inside our report template once we have that if we look down here i've got something called a shape called header text now this is just a sample shape i've dropped it down here just so we don't see it but basically i've created a shape right i've given it some white text and this particular uh, rectangle shape is called header sample so we're going to use once this sheet gets duplicated it also gets duplicated for here so if we scroll down here we also see that we have the same header sample so when we duplicate it we're going to take this particular shape and what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate it i'm going to put it right up here i'm going to give it the name of the shape i'm going to give it a very name of the shape called report header seven this one's called report header eight i want the seven or the eight or the nine or whatever it is to be tied to this row here or this row here so that when i extract it if i take the name out of it i know what row is associated with that that's going to be very important so i know what row for example if i want to hide it or sort it i know what to sort if i click here i need to know what which one to change that to notice it's changed to name if I check order date, I know which one. So to do that, I need to extract that particular shape name right here. And to get that, you see report header nine. So I need to know what row is associated with that. So we're going to duplicate that shape. And we're going to do that directly here. But before we do that, what we need to do is we need to clear out the existing shape. In case there's any existing shape, we're going to basically clear them all out and recreate them. So to do that, I'm going to look for any specific shape that might be called here. Look here, we click on the name called report header header report header so that's what i'm going to be looking for so any shape that says report header here i want to look for it here any shape that contains that so let's go inside here and look at that so what we're going to do is we're going to look in the header shape now this variable is based on a shape okay so what we're going to do is we're going to loop so we've got header shape now this has been dimensioned as a shape up here header shape as a shape so we're going to loop through all of the shapes inside the sheet for each header shape in shapes of that actor sheet no words we're using actor sheet because we don't know the name of the sheet it could be for customers it could be for orders or whatever so we're always going to use actor sheet in this particular training or actor sheet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look for every single shape in the sheet and i'm going to look at its name 
if the string report header, which is unique to just these report, if that is found inside the name, it's greater than zero, then we're going to delete it. So I'm looking for this particular string here. Notice every single header has that here. So to do that, we just find it here. Okay, so once we have that, what we want to do is we then, well, let me just reset that code. I want to delete it. So we're just simply going to delete it. So then what I want to do is I want to clear all the header markers. What is this? MZ380. This is some particular a marker. I've got basically just the space in here. If we take a look at this, this is going to help for conditional formatting. So I want to make sure to clear all that. And that's going to be located inside the cell. So M628. Notice there's a space right here. You see that? Kind of, it's kind of hard to see. Just a space inside there. And that's going to help with conditional formatting, knowing that there's a value here. So we'll go over that. But basically, what I'm going to do is add a space behind this. You can't see it. If I move this, right, you can see that there's, there's going to be a space between this one and just one space. That's all we need. So I'm going to clear that out. I want to clear it out. Clear out, we'll call those header markers. It's simply just a space inside row six for each column of our database. So it's going to stretch all the way from M and then it's going to go all the way to the last one. But we're going to clear any out as we reset it. So we're clearing that. What we're going to do is we're going to set the database sheet. We're going to set that in a string variable. It's going to be right here based on what's in E2. So I want to put that into a string variable called database sheet. I also want to set the header row. We're going to have to loop through all the databases. It's going to be an I3, that header row. Now what I want to do is I want to clear any prior results, CA2 through DZ2 from our database. What does that mean, CA2 through DZ? If we look in our database and we go all the way over to CA2, I want to clear, remember, these results as we bring the results over in our advanced filter i want to make sure that it's in the right order i'm just going to clear out anything here so it's basically going to go to delete we're just going to clear everything out clearing that out because we're going to be adding brand new ones up here in the right order just in case we need to do that so we're clearing them out clear out any prior results then what we want to do is i want to reorder the headers i want to make sure they're in the right order update them so we're going to set the last report header row based on d so what is the last report header row the last row is here in row 19 as we loop so what i want to get the last one i want to know that 19 i will put that into a variable so we're going to use column d and excel up d and excel up that's going to get us the last row of all of our headers going to put that into a variable called last report header row now if it's less than seven we're going to exit this up that means there's no headers although they're not now what i want to do is i want to sort them i want to sort them based on this order here that means if i change them if i decided we're going to change this here and i decided to change that order i want to make sure that we change the numbers here and then we resort them it happens very quick but i always want to sort them based on the order here so if i want to change order dates and status date all i need to do is put three here and i need to put two here once three is here and two is here, then I then run and I sort them based on the number, it's gonna change them automatically. So we wanna make sure we sort based on the order, always gonna be sorting based on G7, the active sheet. First, we're gonna clear any sorts out. Anytime we use sort, we need to clear the current sort out. We're gonna set that, that key based on G7, right here, that first value inside our sort range. We're gonna sort it ascending from low to high. We're gonna sort normal. We're gonna set that entire range based on C7. Here's our start all the way to K and whatever that last row is. That is the range that we're going to be sorting. So it's C7 through K, it shouldn't be K, it should be K, oh, that can't work, that's not helpful. K and the last report header row. So that's the last column and we're gonna set that range. That's the range of our header. Okay, moving on, then we're gonna apply that sort. Now we're gonna set the result column. Now what I wanna do is I basically want to get all of these headers, all those headers, anything here that we have and I wanna put them inside our results here because I want to update those results based on the order. That way, when we have our advanced filter, we want the results to come in the right order. In other words, if I switch status and order date, status and order date, let's say we switch them in here. If I look in the order, but notice this, if I take status and I move it over to here, now what we need is we need order ID, order date, and status. I also want to make sure that that happens inside our database. Order ID, order date, and status, it has to match order ID, order date, and status. So I wanna make sure that we're basing it on that. So we also need to make that update here. So I wanna take 
all of those values directly from the header and place them directly inside here. So we're going to do that here, but I need to set that initial column. If we take a look at this, we go do column, we see that this is column 79. So I know that our first one's going to be column 79, and we're going to increment the column as we move on. We know it's going to be in row two, and we know the starting column is going to be column 79. We just have to increment it, 79, 80, and so on and so forth. So that initial column is going to be 79. I'm going to loop through all the headers. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the headers here, taking all these headers, the database headers, not the report headers. I want the database or table header names, and I want to place them directly inside here, all the way up here, just the way we've done it. So to do that, we're going to run that loop for the report header equals seven to the last report header row. Now with the database, Sheets database, cells two, remember we're focused on two, row two, and the result column starts out at 79. That value is going to be D and the report header row. That value is going to come directly from here, D7, D8, D9, and so on and so forth. And it's simply going to place those values directly here. You know, CA2, CB2, CC2, and so on and so forth. So that's what that loop's gonna, we're gonna update the advanced filter results for the new column order, right? When we change that column order, we need to make sure that those results are order is also changed, very important. We're gonna set the result column equals the result column. Remember, we need, it starts out at 79, goes to 80. We need to increment that column number so we can do that with this line of code. Result column equals result column plus one. Increment that result column. I also wanna set the report column. The report column equals report header plus one. Remember, we're also creating these report columns. I want to know what column it's associated with. And that column is going to start out right here, column M, and so we need to increment that too. So that column has to be, so what is that column? column here, that report column is the report header row plus six. Why is that? We know this starts on seven, but what is our first column? Our first column is always going to be here. If our first column is all the way in column M, our first column we know is 13. So how do we get from seven to 13? We do that simply by adding six. So we know that our column here, because I've got to know where to place this header. I need to know to place it in column M or N. So we need to get the column number. So that's going to be called report column. It's going to go from 13, 14, and so on and so forth. We're just going to be adding six, setting that report column into a variable. I also want to know the field type. That field type is very important. Why is it important? Because I need to know to format this as a date or I need to know to format this as a currency or format this as a number. So that's why that format plays an important part. We're gonna extract that format directly from here, F and whatever that row is. So that field type is simply gonna be F in the header row. We're extracting that format, extract field format type. So we know the type of the format. Now, once we know the type of the format, all we need to do is extract that format. If we know it's a date format, I'm just gonna use this date format here. If I know it's an amount, I'm gonna use this amount format. Notice these are named ranges. So that's how we're going to do it inside that. Okay, great, so we have that sort of report. Let's go back to here. Continuing on with our code. So now all we need to do is just get that header marker for the occupied columns. Remember I said I wanna make sure that we have a space here and that's gonna help us with, I'll show you that a little bit later, but basically every single header here in six is just gonna get a space. Right, for every single one. So we cleared them all out. So all I'm doing again is adding a space right here. All right, notice that, that, it, that it's not moving it because I'm simply right clicking. I'm not single clicking on it. Okay, so we're gonna set the space in and that's gonna add the header marker for conditional formatting. It'll help us for that we know that that column has data. We basically wanna know the column has data. All right, so continuing on. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create and place the shape. So now what I wanna do is I wanna place all these header shapes in the right spot. Basically, I wanna match the column width. I I want to match the row height and I want to set the name basically to the same name as the report header in column E, which is our report, not column D, which is our, for our database. So to do that, we're going to focus on our sample header shape. That's that shape that I showed you down here. If we take a look, it's this shape right here. This is the shape that we're duplicating. And we're going to do that inside the code directly here. Header shape, duplicate, and we're giving it a very unique name called report header, and then the report row. Why is that important? That's important because I'm going to tie this particular shape, report header seven, with this row here, seven, or order date here, report header eight, with this row here. Very important. Okay, so we're going to give it that name. Now we can work with that. With the shapes, that brand new shape that we just created, we're going to give it a very specific text, right? What's, what do we want the text inside that shape? Using text, text range, we're going to use whatever's in column E. E is going to take on that report header name. 
Then what I want to do is I want to set the left position based on row six and the report column, based on the top position of row six and the report column. So we're setting that position, that left position, that top position exactly where we want it. I also want to set the width of it. What's the width of it? It's going to be exactly the width of that column. And the height, it's going to be exactly the height of that row. So it's going to be row six, that height of that row, or it's going to be the width of that column. All right, now what I want to do is I want to say, are we going to display, are we displaying the shape? It gets created automatically, but we may not want to display that shape if that row is hidden. Notice that if that particular column, excuse me, column is hidden, I don't want to display that shape. So what do we, if we make it visible or not, is going to be based on whether H is blank or not. So we're going to check on that. If the active sheet H and the report header, if equals empty, that means that that particular column is not displayed. Then we're going to take that shape and we're going to make it invisible. When we duplicate it here, it's automatically visible. So we need to make it that particular shape, uh, hide it. To do that, we're going to use visible equals MSO false. It's going to hide the header for hidden columns, right? The columns are hidden. When I basically display a column, notice it goes from L to N, but M is right there. It's just hidden, okay? So we know that it's hidden. But when we want to display it, we just simply hide it or show it. Okay, so that's how we create that particular column and the column, the headers. So that's all we do to create and position the headers. Now what we want to do is I want to set some formulas for the date ranges. Date range is very important, right? If I'm creating a date range right here, here's our date range. I want to have make sure that criteria is set inside that, right? So I know that inside our criteria, we have to have some kind of date range. Notice that the order date has to be greater than a certain date or less than a certain date so that we can run that advanced filter and make sure that only those dates appear in our results. So to do that, now these are not particular cells. If we take a look inside our report, we take a look, this is a shape. This is a group of shapes and it's not a cell. You see, this is a shape. Basically, this is a text box, but I have to tie a date to that. So how do I do that? Well, what I can do is I tie a specific cell to that. Notice it says B6. So, and notice if we take a look inside the two, it says B7. And that's gonna come from our hidden column. So if I go over here and I right click and I unhide it, we're gonna see that we have some information. We have a from date in B6 and we have a to date in B7. If I were to click on this pop-up calendar, which is the macro that's going to run, and we see that it displays that pop-up calendar, and if I click on January 4th, we see that that date is gonna to change to January 4th. So it's hidden, but it's going to show, when we make a date change, it's gonna do that. So what I want to do inside this macro, I want to make sure that we tie the formulas to the proper place. So I want to do that. So we're going to say date filters. We have a name for this. If we take a look inside this particular shape here, this group is called date filter group. And I want it inside a nice group so that we can show it or hide it. But if I want to specify a very specific shape inside that group, I need to use group items. And what I want to do is I want to set the formula. This is important. When we duplicate the shape, it doesn't necessarily duplicate the formula. So we need to re create that. It does duplicate it, but it doesn't work. In other words, when I duplicate this report sample, this date, look, it's already tied to B6, but it didn't work. In other words, it didn't update. But if I force it again, it will update, meaning we, we need to do it again to force it. So what we want to do is tie this particular shape to B6 once again, and we can do that inside VBA using that Remember, it's part of a group, right? So this filter by form is part of a larger group. That larger group is called date filter group. So we're gonna focus date filter group, group items, filter by from date. I wanna reset that formula. Drawing object formula equals B6. We're gonna update the date from formula. I also wanna do the same thing with the to date. Filter by to date, drawing object formula equals B7 updating the to date formula. This should be to date formula. So we're updating that. Now I also want to update the text. Now if we take a look at this inside our orders report, we'd see it says filter by order date, right? So that's kind of nice. So we're knowing what we're filter. But what if I change it? Notice we have to date. We have order date and we have a due date, right? So but if I want to change it to due date, I'm going to select due date. It's going to give us a warning. It's going to let us know that only one day filter can be used within a report. That's fine. Only one day. It should be date filter. I'll fix that. So that's fine. But now it says filter by due date. So notice how it changed. If we take a look inside here, I need to tie this particular box called filter by name is to B8. So basically, because the text inside this box is dynamic based on whatever we're using. So whether if it's order date, if we change that back to order date, it's going to say now filter by order date. So this dynamic text changes based on the type of date filter that we're using. So to do that, to get that dynamic text, I have to tie it to a specific cell. Then I can up 
update that cell. So if we take a look inside B8, we see that it's filter by and then whatever's in B5. So if I change this to due date, it's going to automatically change this filter by due date. So changing this or due date here, like changing this automatically will change it, the text here, because it's linked. So we can now link it. So any shape that's linked to this will automatically change this. And that's kind of nice in the way, instead of just saying by date, we can actually show what type of date because one database has order date or we have due date. We need to know which one we're filtering by. So if I change this to due date or order date here, it's going to automatically change inside here. Just selecting it and unselecting it will show by order date. So it's going to show. So to do that, we need to update that formula as well date filter filter by name simply drawing object formula equals ba update the text filter shape okay great so now remember we've extracted this field type we put it inside a variable but now what i want to do is i want to then apply that format to the entire report column for the associate as we loop through it i need to make sure that this column gets date this one gets numbers this one gets amounts and this one gets date and the others get text so to do that we're going to set the report column formats using select case now we're using select case if the field type is text we're going to set the format to this at, which is basically a text format. And then, so basically we're, we're turning it around. The field format now is text. If the case is a date, if it's a field type date, we're going to set the field format based on whatever's inside the admin date field, the number format. So I'm going to basically look inside the admin. I'm going to look at this field called date field, and I'm going to take whatever the format of this particular cell, we're going to put that format inside a string variable, and that string variable is going to be called field format. We're going to do the same thing for amount. We're going to pull it from the amount field. So this basically, as all we need to do is just change these formats, and they're going to be changed throughout the report. So these are the default field formats. Simply put, we just need to change it. So that's all we need to do. So each time this it's going to go into this string variable called field format. Then all we need to do is update the individual column here with whatever that format is. And we do that with this line of code range starting in row seven and that report column as we loop through all the way to, let's say, a large row 999 report column. We're going to update that number format of all those cells with the field format. That's going to set the report column format. That's going to sit up there. That's how we then format our columns based on the field type using our particular formats that we've set up inside the admin screen. That went really well. So we've got, we're moving along. So that is that the macro called report update column headers. Perfect. So that one we went through there. So that's going to take it. So we've gone through update database fields. We've gone through update column headers. Let's set up that filter. We need to set up that filter. That's going to be go through the filter field. So I put these in individual macros, right click definition can be called report setup filter. And that's going to be in a module called report filter refresh macro. So within this report setup filter in this macro, what are we trying to accomplish? Well, basically what I want to do is I want to run a loop through all of these fields and I want to look at which ones contain filters. Those that contain filters, I want to then take that information and I want to put the criteria up here. I know if it's a date, a date is going to require two fields. So we're going to put here and here. However, for every other field that we want filters, I want to put the header criteria here, here, and here. Notice we have order type, employee, terms, footer, order ID, and date. So we have all of those and those are the same ones that we have as filters here. So as we remove those filters, I also want to make updates according to here. So notice the criteria change here. So I want to update the criteria as changes are made to our filters here. So that's primarily the job of this macro. So let's go through it and take a look and see exactly how we did that. Okay, so we're going to focus on the active sheet. Of course, I want to extract, I need to know what sheet, the database sheet that we're going to be making those changes. We're going to put that into the database sheet. And of course, if it's empty, we're going to exit the sub. Now I want to clear out any previous criteria that I may have added inside that database sheet. So from BA2 all the way through B, I guess we're going to go all the way to BZ just in case there's a lot. I'm going to clear that entire area out. So we're just basically BA through BZ3, we're clearing any previous criteria that we may have added. And also want to set the database header row. If I, I want to know the row of that database header, here's two. So I want to extract that and we're going to extract that directly from I3. So as we move to I3, then I also want to know the first database column from G2 and the last database column from G3. And this is helpful if there's any updates to the database. I also want to know the last report header row. We're going to loop through these. I need to know which ones are filters. So we're going to loop from seven all the way to the last one. 
as we loop through that. And of course, if the last one is less than seven, we have no, we can't make a loop, so we're gonna exit the sub. I also wanna set the criteria as we increase, as we create more filters for additional fields, we need to have an initial criteria column, right? So as we add more criteria here, 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 and here, I want to start at an initial column. So how are we going to do that? Well, if we see, if we look here, we see this is column or 53. So we know 53, but we're going to reserve 53 for the date, if there's any date. So the first one's going to be 54. If there's a date, I'm going to put it here and here. So whichever one date. So our first one's going to be here. If it's a date, it's here and here. So that's what we're going to differentiate. So we're setting our first one based on 54. That's our initial criteria column. We're getting ready to run our loop from our again from seven to the last row. So we're running our loop, we're checking to see which ones contain those filters. So here we go. So for the report header row equals seven all the way to the last report header row. If H is our display column, we want to make sure it's displayed. If it's not displayed, we can skip it, right? There's nothing. If it's not displayed, we don't need to create a filter for it because it's not displayed. So the first thing we want to do is check to make sure it is the display column. If not, we can skip it. Okay, continuing on. If it's we're going to skip it, we're simply going to go to skip column, which is going to go all the way down here to skip and just go to the next header row. So we're simply just skipping everything else because that is not a visible column. Okay, we're going to set the report column. I need to know the report column. It's going to be the report header row plus six. That is the column that's associated with that. We could also set that based on what is located in C or the header row seven plus six is 13. So I want to know 13. I want to know this column 13, 14, or 15. So we're setting that. We know that our first one's always in 13. 13 is M. And we know our first one's here in seven. So we're adding six to get to that third down. I want to know the column that's associated with that as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see what field type I need to differentiate. Because if it's a date field type, we need to do one thing. If it's anything else, I need to differentiate. So we're going to set that field type into a variable based on what's in column F. That is going to be our field type. We're setting that up. Now what I want to know is if it is a filter. Are we filtering it? How do we know for filtering it? Because it's contained in column I. If column I contains the character 252, which is our checkbox, it is a filterable column and we are going to add the criteria. So where are we going to add the criteria? The Sheets database criteria column, remember it starts out at 54, equals D in the report header row equals what's in here, right? We're setting that original database name. We need to make sure it's the original database header name. We're going to put that directly inside here. So order ID, order date, order type. So all those here are here. Now, if it's a date, it's going to be added here and here. So that we're going to keep that in mind. So, but the first thing we're going to do is add it here, here, here. Now, if the field type is a date, we need to do a few things. What do I need to do? Well, the first thing what I need to do inside B5, what is B5? I want to set the date field in the report header row. Let's take a look inside B5 and go ahead and here. Now we see that B5 contains that order date. Remember, I said we need to have a custom text here, We're filter by order date or filter by due date or whatever it is. And when we add in that type here based on whatever is in E, if you see it says order date, but maybe we want to change that to order date, right? So now when we update the filters, if I decide I'm going to update the filters here, we'll just run it back. But let's go ahead and this date, adding this date back here and then updating the filters here for this. I want to make sure that it says order date. So now it says order date. So what I want to do is I want to place whatever is inside E and I'll place it directly inside B5. So that's going to set that text for our label. So we're doing that right here. Set the date field label, put label here. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to add, I want to add whatever's located in here. So I'm going to add in D in the header, setting that header name. Where do I want to put that header name? That header name is going to go directly inside row two and column 53 because it's a date. Because it's a date, it does require two fields, greater than a certain field or less than a certain date, right? So there's two fields that we need to do it by. So to do that, we're going to set the first one always going to be in 52. So 52 is going to take on the first greater than this. What is the formula? The formula is basically greater than orders report b6 so that's going to be our formula so our first one's going to go in 52 because it's a date that's what's going to go in column 50 excuse me 53 53 54 is our first one 53 now what we want to do is we want to set the formula this is column 53 equals columns take a quick look just so we can confirm this is column 53 so the first thing we want to do is place that header right here according to the database remember it's the same as that database order date 
same header. Now what we want to do is we want to put a formula in. That formula is going to be greater than or equal to whatever the user has placed in B5. That date, remember that date that they've set right here in this thing, in this particular text box here, is also linked to what's located right here inside B6. So greater than or equal to whatever's in B6. That is the formula that I must put right here, greater than or equal to B6. So we can do that through a VBA here, Sheets Database 53. This one is in row three, so this is our criteria. It's equal to, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use character 34, which is the quotation mark, and greater than or equal, then another quotation mark, and then the and sign, and then the name of the sheet, the name of the, the active sheet name, right? What is the name of our report sheet? And B6, so that's gonna set. So notice how this particular formula here that we're adding is the same as this orders, here's the name of the sheet, and B6. So we're setting the from formula criteria. And now what we also wanna set the to. So this is always gonna be in column 53. However, the next one's gonna be in whatever column that we're moving it on, right? So it's whatever column here. So order date, this one, we're gonna set, again, the order date, this one's gonna be less than whatever's in B7. So here, the column is that dynamic column. And then also what we want to do is set up our particular formula here, which is less than or equal to, and then the name, and then B7. So this is going to tie the formula for our dates here based on what's in B6 and B7. So again, let's just review. So we have two text boxes here. Here's our from field and here's our to field. Let's go ahead and select that. Here's our from field right here because it's in a group from filter by from date. Here's our filter by to date. Both of those are linked to B5 and B, excuse me, B6 and B7. Now, both of the values here are linked to here, our criteria here in BA3 and BC3. So those are linked and we create these formulas through VBA right here and right here. So both of those formulas get created here. Now this is all if it's a date field. So all this happens only on date type. All of the other types of filters, all we do is get two things. All we need to do is place the enter filter on the form. Remember, I wanna also add the enter filter. I wanna put this enter filter here inside M7. And so that's gonna take it on. So how do we do that? So with the active sheet here, we're on row seven, the report header row plus six. Actually, we could use the report column. I think we, cause we got a variable here called report column. So we'll just use that report column. I forgot that we created a variable for that report column because we've already created it. Remember here, report column equals report header row plus six. So we can just use that variable. That is our the column in our report. I want to also auto fit that. As we add them, so let's see if we undo the filter. We can do that there, and what that's gonna do is auto-fit that. And that's kind of important because I wanted to make sure that we're auto-fitting it. So for example, if we have a string comment and we add the filter by, I wanna make sure that that column expands accordingly to make sure that that enter filter is visible. Right? If we have it small, again, let's go over that one more time. When I select this, we're gonna run that macro. That macro automatically expands this column using something called auto fit. So we can do entire column auto fit based on that report column. So that's all, and of course, we want to do is just make sure that we have that here. So that's all we have to do. Remember here, we've already set the criteria for every single field here. We've already set that criteria based on two here, which is right here. Now, to, now when we add a value, right, when we add that value, oops, not there. When we add, when we have an enter value, that's going to be on worksheet change. And we haven't gone over that yet, but we will, of course. And we're going to go over just that. All right. So basically, all we're doing now is just setting up these headers. And for dates, we're adding the formulas in. So all we're doing is adding these headers in for dates. That's all we've done so far up there. And this one just simply adds the criteria, add criteria header. Okay, good. So we've added the criteria header there. So that's everything we've done there. Now all we do is just increment the criteria column, right? As we add one, we increment the column, next one, next one, as we move along with all the criteria. So for every single filter, we're just going to increase the criteria here. Okay, so continuing on. So what if there's no filter? If there's no filter and the field type equals date, then what do I want to do? Then I want to clear the contents of the report. So again, we can use this again, report column here, R-E-P-T, 
column, we're gonna clear the content. So that means as long as it's not date, what does that mean there? And that means basically I just don't wanna have anything here in row seven. We don't, we can just delete that because there's no filter. I don't wanna put enter filter here. And that is row seven in program clearing the contents. And that simply means if there's no filter there, we're just gonna clear it out. And conditional formatting takes that. So notice how it disappeared when I added the filter. All right, so that's how we do that as we loop through that. So if it's gonna be a filter, we're doing all this. If it's not a filter, we're simply clearing the contents out. If it's not a date, we're in, now dates, of course, don't have this. Notice the order date doesn't have anything here. And why is that? Because order dates we're taking care of up here. The dates are handled because there's two fields that handle the dates. So we wanna make sure they're handled up here and not in there. Because in this case, we would only be able to put one date here. So we don't wanna add the filter here. We wanna use the separate fields up here. So that's how we're going to handle the dates. Okay, so that's all, everything we have to do. That's all we have to do to set up the report filter. And that sets it up. So basically all we're doing is simply looping through those checking for the filters if it's a date we're going to do something if it's another so we've set up for the filters okay very good i'm glad we got report setup filter though so that's another one that's important so we just went over that so we've went over the three update database fields update column headers setting the report filters now what i want to do is i want to update the database results set up the results column now what is that macro i want to make sure that as the user makes changes here i want to make sure that our database our results column are automatically set up here so we're going to run we have a separate macro that just makes sure that the database results here are correct because as the user changes orders we want a separate macro that's going to do that so to ensure that we have this macro called update database results and all it does is just loop through the fields and it updates those results so it's a relatively small macro with the active sheet the database sheet we're going to set on e2 so you're on here and we're going to update those so we're going to just take we want the database sheet in e2 and I want, again, to determine the database header row is based on I3. I need to know the header row. The last report header row located in D. And again, we're going to loop again through column headers here. So we need to get the last row here as we loop through them. And then also what I want is to set the results just as we did before. I want to set that first column to 79 as we increment those. So setting the first, this is column 79. I want to set the first result and just basically copy all the information inside this header those results i want to make sure they're exactly the same as what is in here so that's all we're going to be doing as we loop through that we did something similar before we're going to clear any prior results in case we did it we're going to do it again we want to make sure that we clear all the prior results here we are then going to set our default we, we set this already we don't need to do it twice we're going to loop through the headers from seven to the last the database sheet row two in the result column is simply equal to whatever's in d in the header results so basically we're just simply adding whatever's in column d and we're simply adding those labels directly up here as we increment through and as we do we're going to increase the result one that's it that's all we have to do with this macro it's relatively simple okay so that sets up the database column next up we're going to run the refresh the report that's the last macro that we'll be going inside this macro as far as the setup and we just have a few others so report refresh report refresh that's the one i want to focus on now basically that is the same macro that is tied to this button here that when we refresh the report it just refreshes it and if there's any filters it is the same macro that we run every time we run a, a filter work order if we add that it's going to refresh that and it's going to show only those work orders okay so report refresh let's take a quick look at that so we're going to right click that and that's going to go right in here we can also locate it directly inside port sheet filter refresh this one right here We've gone over the setup the filter and now we're going to focus on report refresh so taking a look at this we're going to focus on the active sheet what i want to do is i want to clear any existing data so every day starting we know our first row of data is going to be an m8 we don't know how far it's going to go so we're just going to clear out a whole bunch of columns and a whole bunch of rows just from that point on so m8 all the way through az and then a lot of rows clearing out all the existing data report Again, just as we have done before, we're gonna set that database sheet based on what's located in E2. And I also want to know clearing out any previous results, right? So we know the database sheet and we know the results are gonna come in here. We know it's gonna be CA3 all the way and then way over all the way to the right and all the way down. So we're gonna clear that up. CA all the way through DZ, clearing any previous results on the database sheet. We're going to set the database header row based on what's in i3 in case that we need that so that's going to come from i3 just as we did before that i3 which is here the header row is two here and then what i want to do is i want to know the first database column and the last database column 
here to making sure and I want to know the last report we're gonna to have to run an advanced filter so we need to know the framework we need to know all the information on this because we're running an advanced filter based on this data here's the advanced filter we're going to determine the first row all the way to last the header row all the way to the last row then what we're going to do is we're going to set some criteria first ba2 to this now also our criteria might contain some blanks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to determine the last column which is m but i'm going to add one to that adding one why is that important because i want to add a blank column when i add a blank column to our original data that means i can have blank columns in our criteria that means i can also have blank columns in our resort which is very very helpful so that's what we're going to do so we're going to determine the last database column and i also want to know the last head of report row again we're going to loop we're going to need to loop through these so once again i need to know the last row which is 19 in this case if the last row is less than seven we're going to exit the sub i also want to know the total columns what are the total number of columns simply the last database column minus the first database column plus one that's going to get us the total number number of columns okay now we're ready to focus that was everything with the active sheet so now we're going to focus on that database sheet ready to run that advanced filter i need to determine the last database row what's the last row we're going to use that first database column right we don't know what column it's going to be but we're going to use the first database column to determine that in this case the last row here is 18 but we may need to know you know we're going to determine the last row based on that first column so we're going to put that into a variable called last database row if it's less than the data if it equals the database row we're going to exit the sub and that means there's no data right if the last row is simply the same as the header row we know there's no data we can exit the sub there's nothing else so now what we're doing is we're ready to run our advanced filter this is going to be dynamic so we're going to base it on the range right we're already focused on the database sheet here so cells what's our starting point our starting point is the header row and the first database column so this is the first cell inside our advanced filter and what is the last cell it's going to be the last database row plus the last database column plus one remember I want to include the blank column that's very important because that helps us that means our results can have blank columns and that means our and I'll show you why that's important our criteria can have blanks too so we want to include that blank column therefore plus one now our criteria now here, here's what we can do here's the advantage I don't I can set a very specific criteria why is that notice to take a look at our criteria is BA2 through BZ3 BA2 we know it starts here to B why BZ why why is that that means we can have a nice open area for our criteria we include any columns and yes it contains blanks and why is that okay it's okay because our original data also has that blank row including column n therefore we can we don't need to use we can use a fixed range that's going to cover 26 fields if you want to use more can this is going to contain 26 criteria which is pretty good so that means we got 26 columns and that means anything in this area we can use so it's fixed right that's why we did it and then of course the same thing with our results our results also can have a very large ca2 through dz2 that means our results can have also blanks so our results ca2 all the way through whatever cz or dz or whatever because we've included blanks now if you were to not include this blank this empty row you running this filter would create an error let's take a look at that see what that would look like but let's say we don't include the one extra column inside there and if i try to run this filter we're going to get a problem and why is that it says subscript out of range why is that oh well first of all that's a different reason that's the reason the reason is because our database equals nothing because it's on the wrong sheet now if i run the same macro on this sheet we'll we're going to get a different kind of error here's the error that we're going to get the extract range has missing or invalid field names you may have seen this when you run advanced filter and that is because simply this why do we get this error simply is because our extract look our criteria includes all these blank fields but our original data doesn't we've excluded it so it's very important to add that plus one in here so that we can accommodate blank fields so now when i try to run it we're going to not going to get that error it's going to continue and work just fine so that's important a lot of it had to do with active sheet so that's not really helpful so we'll just clear out this data because we were focused on active sheet and normally right active sheet's going to be this one always this one here so when we run it refresh this we're going to get that amount of correct data okay continuing on now what i also want to do is i want to make sure that we auto fit the columns right so here we go with this particular sheet we've added our advanced filter we've created that now what i want to do is i want to determine the last row of the results if we take a look inside here what is the last row of our results you see if we take that ca i want to know what the last row is and put that into a variable we're going to call it the last results row and it's going to be based on 
column CA. If it's less than three, that means we have no results. We can exit the sub. If it's not, then what are we going to do? We are going to then, then turn off, right? We're, this is our last exit sub. I'm gonna turn off screen updating, turn off calculations and updating. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to take all of those these results that came here and we're gonna bring them directly inside our report, starting here in M8. So we can do that with the following lines of code. Here, range, focus on the active sheet. Remember, we just ran this macro, except this was our active sheet, right? So it brought all of those results right here. That's what you just saw, it brought all of those results here. But normally it brings them here because of our active sheet. It's bringing those results into our active sheet, starting in M8. That's why in the last you saw right here, when we were on M8, it brought those results directly in here. So you notice that, right? So it brought those. That's why it brought those results, which is correct, which is what I want. We can just paste in some, some actual values here, which we do. Okay, so we have some fake data here. So continuing on, what do we want to do? So bringing them in. So starting here in row 8, column 13. This here is M8, row 8, 13. This is our first part of the range. And what is our last part? Active sheet, again, cells active sheet sells the last result row plus five i'm adding additional ones why am i adding five that's important because our look our first result starts in row eight but what about in our database sheet our first results start in row three so we need to compensate there's five rows difference so we can do that by adding five here what is about the col columns total columns 12 we're adding 12 onto the total columns why is that and that is because our first column, our total columns are the number of columns, but the first column here is column 13, right? So I need to add 12 because I need to make sure that the place, so it's gonna be the total columns plus 12. So here's our total columns plus 12 because we're starting in column 13, which is M. That's why we need to add 12 plus the total columns. So this is our destination. This is where we want the data to come. Now, where is it coming from? It's coming from our database sheet and our database sheet is located on cells 379. We could also use a range. So 379, what is that? Using the cells, if we take a look inside our orders, we know this is column row three and column 79. So this is the starting point. What is the last point? The last point is 78 right plus the total columns we know the total columns so having the total columns no we know the total number of columns to bring up plus 78 78 is this one right here so this column right here is 78 so if we add in plus the total columns we're going to get to this point and then we have the last row we know the last row we've already defined the last results row here so we can just use that directly in here the last results row here 78 plus the total columns so this is our results data our results data which is going to come directly inside our report results okay great so that's going to bring it all in so once we have that in there now it's time to auto fit those columns now what i want to do when i bring in this data here i want to make sure that the data fits inside and right because i want to make sure that this column is larger i want to make sure that this column is smaller and so on and so forth how do we know that well we can again use auto fit so we're going to do that with every single and i'm going to do it column by column so we're going to run a loop for the report header row we know from seven to the last report we've already we know how many rows of data there are based on this so we know we can run a loop from here to here it's the same as the column so if i know that this is seven i know that this is associated with column 13 14 and 15. so we know that so we can run this so if the active sheet h value as long as it's visible making sure that it is visible we don't want to auto fit columns that are invisible we know if, if uh, this column is hidden we certainly don't want to auto fit that because it's going to expand it as soon as we auto fit it so we only want to do those with you notice how that it, it was hidden right when it's hidden we don't want to auto fit it so we want to make sure that h and the row here is actually visible making sure that there's character 252. if it is then we're going to auto fit the column using the active sheet of course, starting in column seven, the report header row plus six, that's it. Remember, 13, if I wanna do column 13, I know it's seven, adding six is gonna get that column that we want, which is 13, so that's why we add six. All the way to the active shell large row, columns auto fit so this will auto fit all the columns so that all of our data encompasses this sometimes you if you have a data with a lot of column a lot of data in a single column you may want to set a limit so after you run this auto fit you could say something like if the column width is greater than uh, 100 then set it to 100 or something so you could set that maximum too using an if then statement right here that you might do that if your if your columns have a lot of data or you might want to set a minimum column too right if it's less than 
uh, let's say, you know, 10 or something, make it 15. So you can set minimum and maximums. If that's something you want me to see, let me know. If you want to see it, I will take care of it for you on Patreon, all right? You want set, setting minimum and maximum column widths, we can do that as well. Okay, very good. So that's pretty much as far as a, a rush. Then what I want to do is I want to run a macro called update totals. Now, update totals, we have right here and right here. We want to make sure that we're updating those totals because I want to make sure that it's on the last. So we're going to be taking care of that. All right, so let's take a look at that macro and see how we make those totals happen. So I'm going to right click, go to the definition, and what's going to take us to something called sorting macros. Sorting macro. We have uh, something called report update totals. So we have uh, dimension the first total row, the last total row, the header row. Now the idea is basically this. I'm going to look through all these, loop through these, any uh, particular rows that have a checkbox here. I want to make sure that we add a total for that column. And I also want to add the word totals in the column before. So that means, for example, if I unselect this column, I want to make sure that the word totals is in the column before. So notice now we decided not to total the column. So I want to make sure the word totals in the column before. Again, if we go ahead and add that in, I want to make sure that the totals, the word text, is in the column before. So let's take a look at that and go for that. All right. So we're going to focus on the actor sheet. I need to determine the last row of our data. I want to find the last row. Now, I don't know which row has data, right? I don't know. I want to get that totals row. So we're going to look through all of this content here and determine the last row. So how do we do that? We can determine it using the entire range, M8 all the way through AZ99. So that's a large. What I'm going to do, I'm going to find any particular cell with a value, any kind of value. We're going to look in the formulas by whole. I want to know rows because I want to extract the rows and I want to know previous. So basically, it's going to look at the bottom, go all the way up, and find the first row with a value and determine does it contain the word totals. In other words, is it just data that's the last row or is it a totals row? That's very important to differentiate between the last row of data and a totals row. So I'm going to look inside this last row and I'm going to look for the word totals with a colon. If it exists, then I know it's a totals row. So inside the code, this is what we're going to do. We're going to determine the totals column. Now, if it's not found, it could re return an error. Therefore, we're going to wrap it in on error, resume next, or on error, go to zero. So we're going to set the total column. I want to know what the column is going to be the range starting with the last row of data that we've already set here, starting at column 13, going all the way to column 99, just a high number. So I'm going to look in this last row. I'm looking for the word totals with a colon. Looking through the formulas and looking at it's found. And I want to return the column. Now, if the column equals zero, I know it's not been found. So if the total column does not equal zero, then I know that we do have a totals row. I know that the row, and I'm going to clear it out. I just want to delete it, right? So here, I just want to simply, because we're refreshing the totals. So every time, and I'll go over this code a little bit later on, every time we press this like this, we are going to refresh this. So that now we understand the macro. So we're going to basically clear. So what I want to do is I just want to clear it out and redo it. So clearing out this row because I know it's a totals row because it contains the word totals. So we're doing just that. If it, the total column does not equal zero, range sells the last row 13 all the way, just basically clearing out this entire row. Now the last row is simply going to be the last row minus one. So we've deleted this, we've cleared it all out just like that. We're updating the last row to, to 23 instead of 24. We're doing that. So that's what, now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the total. What I want to do now is I want to set the first total row. I want to look for, what am I looking for? Anything else. How do I know where that total row is? Well, I'm going to look in column K. Is it been found? So I'm going to look in this range from K7 all the way to K99. K7 through K99. I want to know the first. Maybe there's multiple totals. So what's the first total row? It's 18. What's the last one? It's 19. So I want to get both of those. That way I don't have to loop through all of them. I only need to loop through the first one to the last one. So I'm going to find the first one and I'm going to go to the last one. So the first one's 18, the last one's 19. So the first total row, again, we're wrapping on error, resume next, and on error, go to zero. Anytime we use the find, we want to make sure to wrap it and catch those errors. So the first total row is going to be K7 to K99. We're going to find what I'm finding. I'm finding anything because this is the totals column. So we, we could find character 252. That would be fine too or anything. So we're going to look in the values. I'm going to look in whole. This one I'm going by rows and next. Next means from the start all the way down. So that means the first one that's going to be found is this one in row 18. I want to know the first one using next because it goes down. 
Now what if I want to find the last one? Then it's going to start at 99 and go up and find the first one available from down up because we're doing previous. So the difference in this is previous. So previous is going to find the last one. Next is going to find the first one. Really cool. So we can use these. So now we can loop from the first one to the last one, assuming that they're both zero. So if the first total really equals zero, then we're going to exit the sub. That means there's no totals. We don't need to go on because there are no totals. But what if there are totals? In that case, if the total row is simply equal to the last row plus one, then again, we're going to set. Here's the last row. I want to set that total row up. That total row is going to be the last row plus one, row 24. This is the row that we're going to put those totals in. So now the total number of columns equals the first row plus six minus one. Let me explain that to you. So I know this is in column 18, but I know this is in row. I know the first one's found in 18. But what I want to do, we know if we, if we look at that, this is column, let's take a look at this. This is column 24. So if I know this is 24, where do I want to put this? I want to put this in column 23. Now we know that always we need to add 18 plus 6 is 24, right? So we know it belongs in 24. But where do I put the totals label? I put that in column 23. So the column label, the label 23 goes into before the first, before the first total. So that's where we're going to put the total here. So that's why we have here plus six minus one. So the total row, this here is our totals column, but I want to put the word totals. I want to put it in the column before. Therefore, we're using minus one. That's going to set that totals label, putting that right there. Okay, so now all we need to do is simply loop from the first total to the last total and making sure. So we're going to do that right here from the first total to the last. This is 18 and 19. They happen to be together. We're going to simply check. If it's check, if K has a check mark, we're going to add the total in. So for the header row equals the first total row to the last total row. We're simply checking in column K to see if we have that check mark. If we know, then it is a total column to be totaled column. So we know it's going to be total. Okay, so we're going to set that total column. What is that column? Again, it's the header row plus six. So we're setting that column to be totaled, header row plus six. Now we're simply going to add in the formula. So the cells, the total row plus the total column, the total row we know, the total column, that value, we can use formula as well, equals the sum, right? And then what do I want to do? The sum of, I want a formula here. What is that sum? It's going to be basically that first row, eight, here, we take a look here, seven, or we should probably use eight. I think it should be eight, not seven, all the way to 23. So that's how we're going to do it. So we're simply going to, I'm going to change this to eight, should be row eight, not seven. So eight plus totals column. So I want to know the address where summing equals and the address of that sheet and the colon. What's the last one? Last row of the total column. So basically taking the address of this, the address of this, separating it by a column and separating it by parentheses after and before right here so that's how we get this particular formula now we can sort it it's still going to be the same we don't have to worry about because that formula is going to take care of so that's how we have formulated it that okay great so let's continue on with our macro so that's all and then of course lastly in case there's a larger in case there's a larger total i want to make sure to auto fit we're going to auto fit that column again because maybe that totals Right? If it's like here and we decide you know, to total it, I want to make sure that when we check or uncheck that, that column automatically gets fitted. So you see it was auto fit. Probably didn't see that too much. Let's see it happen in real time. Okay, So I'm going to reduce this column here so we can't see it. But when I undo the totals and then oops, let's hide these. I'm going to hide these for now because what that is going to do is going to allow us to see everything. And then what we'll do is we'll reduce this here so we can see that. Okay, great. So now when we add the total, we can see that it's automatically fit based on this number. So that way that we can see the entire number because we've auto fit this column. Okay, very good. So that's the last thing that we had to do. We just loop through all the headers. So that's all we needed to do for our totals. And also we're going to focus on the report sort. So we took care of, this is all part of the refresh macro, right? The refresh macro, we're updating the totals. And then what I want to do is I want to sort. Now that we've refreshed it, but I want to know what's, what are we going to sort it on? How are we going to sort it? What's that base default, right? If there's no set, if there's no particular sort, I want to make sure that it's going to go back to the refresh and how are we going to set that def default report refresh. So we're going to look for the sort here and I'm going to know what column to sort it on based on the order type or whatever we want. Maybe we want to base it on the order date 
and it, it's going to be either ascending or descending based on this order date. So I'm going to look inside here. So notice that there's three selections, and I'll go over this code. We're going step by step. So I'm going to look for something in here. If I know that there's a specific text, I know what's the sort of is it ace is it descending is it ascending or descending this should be descending descending right from high to low or nothing or ascending from low to high so this is how we're going to focus on our report called report sort so we're going to look inside our report sorting totals we're going to go up here and it's going to say something called report sort that's the one we're going to be focused on right now all right so we're going to focus again on the active sheet i'm going to set the initial sort row to zero this will come in play but i want to make sure it's set and if there's any error i want to set that i want to get that sort row i need to know i need to look for which row is going to be sorted now only one at a time of course but i need to know which one so i need to find that where any character is so how do we use that we're going to use the find i'm going to look for anything and i'm going to look in column j column j i'm going to look for something look for that shape i'm going to look in formulas and what do i want i want to return the row for each header and shape so that's going to get us the row just in case we're going to double check to make sure that we do have a row then what i want to do is i want to check all the header shapes now let's take a look at this if i set this particular status look how the shape changes look how we've added a character in the shape we know that that particular column is sorted by descending and if we click it again that it's going to match inside better so not only do i want to place the shape here i want to place that little character inside the shape inside the shape here so how are we going to do that well the best way to do that is to loop through all of the shapes so the first thing what we want to do is i want to look inside so we're going to loop through each header shape and shapes now header shape of course is a shape and i'm going to look i'm going to look for all those header shapes what i'm going to do is i want to set the report header row i want to replace it so basically what i'm going to do is i want to clear any of those shapes from the header row because we've changed we're changing the the sort row what i really want to do is i want to remove this icon this little character here from all of the shapes we don't know what shape it's located in but we want to remove it so what's the best way to remove it is simply to reset the names reset the names of every single shape based on the names here so all we need to do is loop through these and and just clear and just make sure that the text that's focused on here is only this and nothing else and not the character so that's what we're going to do so we're going to loop through all of the shapes inside that sheet any shape that contains the word report header if it's greater than zero then we know it's a header shape so i'm simply going to set the header row i want to know what row it's on the report header row what is it you're going to extract that row remember the row that's associated here report header nine how do we know the row because it's nine here so if i remove the text report header it's going to leave us with the nine that nine is going to tell us what row that it's associated status is on row nine so we can do just that with this by extracting this so we're using replace and i'm going to replace this string from the name and what am i going to replace it with i'm going to replace it with nothing what that's going to lead us leave us with it's going to leave us with the row that's associated with that header then all i need to do is simply update the name and making sure that it only contains what's in e and nothing else only what is in column e and nothing else so that means it's going to remove all of those things we're going to now determining where the sort is we're going to add it back again right based on what is there so that's what we're going to do inside the macro if the sort row is equals zero then we're going to exit the sub and that means the user there's no sort like this one there's no sort we can exit the sub that means there's nothing here so we can exit the sub however if there is something sorted i want to make sure that we get care that we are located so if the range now what i need to know is it character 75 or character 74. how do we know that if it's 70 let's see i can't quite remember which one it is here so what we're going to do is we're going to insert let's double check here the symbol let's take a look at what it is if it is 75 we know it's descending if it is character this one 74 we know it's ascending okay so make sure other character five ascending character 74 descending so we're going to focus on that so if j in the sort row value equals character 75 then we know it is ascending i see okay so a we know the sort direction in a string variable this is a string variable here we know it's going to set it 
ascending otherwise the sort direction is descending so basically we're just setting the direction in a string variable based on whatever character is located in here we know it contains a character if it's 75 it's ascending if it's 74 it's descending here okay so once we know whether we're setting it descending or ascending we're going to set now what i want to do is i want to take that sort row let's say the sort row is four now i'm going to take the head of the shape here's the shape here this particular one report header nine let's Put it here sort excuse me row nine sorry row nine here that makes sense row nine so i want to take that row nine and i know that the header report header nine this one i want to make sure that it takes on both the name and the icon as well so to do that we can do that so the report header the sort row the text frame two is going to be basically what's in e which is the name and the space and whatever's located in J. So this is gonna take on the header shape along with the sort icon. So it combines the name with the sort icon. That's how you get them both, whether it's ascending or descending. Okay, so now that we've updated the name of the shape, that header shape, what I want to do is I wanna make sure that we set that character in there. So how do we do that? So I wanna set the character. Remember, we're using two different fonts in the shape. Look. We've got two different fonts in here, but I want to make sure that the font here is Wingdings 3, right? Because it's kind of confusing. This font is Arial or Calibri, I think. This font is Wingdings 3. So notice the shape here contains, the name contains two different fonts. So the only way we can combine that is to use the characters command. So that's what we're going to do now. Right here, we're adding the Wingdings font. So how do we know? But we only wanted to add it to the character and nothing else. So in other words, we don't want to add that, that Wingdings font to the, the text here. We need to keep that as Calibri, but we certainly want to add it to this. So let's go drop this down. I want to show you this here. Let's see if it's going to... So this is Wingdings here. This is... Let's bring this down here. Show that. Okay, so now this is what I want to show you. So if I highlight this here, we see that this Calibri body here, the font. If I highlight this icon here, we see that it's Wingdings 3. So notice two different fonts in the same shape. So to do that, we can use text range characters, but we only want to make sure that we do that with the specified font characters, only the characters that are associated. So to do that, we're going to make an update to the text range, these characters and the length. But how do we know? So I want to take the length of what's in E plus two. What do I mean by that? The length, whatever the length is this, the length of the characters two plus two, one, two, adding one for the space plus another one for the character. And that one plus two for a single character, remember it's only a single character that we're going to change the font name to, Wingdings 3. Again, we're taking the entire length of the name, we're adding two, and for only one character, only one character long, we're only going to change the name to Wingdings. So we're changing that character. So you see here inside this status here, the font doesn't change, even for the space it doesn't change, but only for the character, when I highlight that, we see it's Wingdings 3. Okay, good. So we understand that. That's why we're changing it. That's how we get that character inside there along with the text. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the sort column equal to sort row plus six. I need, want to know the column. This is the column associated with this. We know if this row is 10, we know the column is 16. So we want to set that. The relationship we know is adding six. So we're setting that column. So the sort column, we know what column to sort by because I want to know if I've set this, I need to know what column we're sorting by. So we need to set that up. In this case, it's column O. So so now that we have it in a column, so I want to set the last column. What's the last column is going to be basically G, the value, minus G2 plus 13. What does that mean? If we take a look inside G2, we see that we have the last column is 13, the first column is 12. We know that there's 12. We could simply add these up here too. 19 minus 7 is 12 too. There's many ways we could do that to determine that the number of columns are 12. Basically, I want to extract and I want to know that there's 12 columns. Once I have that into a variable, so we can set that up. So I want to take all the, I want to determine the last column. If I'm going to be sorting this, we know it starts here, but what about the last column? What is the last column? It's column 25. I know it starts in 13, and then now I know the last column is 25 simply by adding 13 to 12, it's going to get us 25. So now I know the entire range to sort. So once we have the last row, I want to determine the last row. Again, we're going to determine the last row if I need to know what last row M8 all the way to do, I want to sort everything. However, not the totals. I want to make sure that we exclude the totals. So how are we going to do that? If the application worksheet, what I want to do, if 
exclude totals. How do I know if it includes totals? I can just look in column K because I don't want to sort, I don't want to include these totals in the sort. I only want to include this. But if I've determined the last row is 24, I want to exclude. I want to go one up. In other words, and sort only this and not include the totals. But I can just check column K. If column K contains anything at all, I know that there's totals and to make it one row less. So that's what we're going to do. If the application worksheet function count A, K through K99 is greater than zero, that means there are totals. There are columns that are be totaling. There is a totals row. We're simply going to reduce the last row by one. Last row equals last row minus one. That's going to exclude the totals row. All right, if the last row is less than nine, we're going to exit the sub. Exit only on one row of data, right? If there's just one single row of data, there's nothing, there's no possible way we can sort one row. So we can exit the sub. Okay, continuing on. Now we're going to sort these. We're going to first clear the sort fields. And I want to know, are we doing ascending or descending, right? So we have the sort direction. If the sort direction, which we've already defined up here based on the character, if it's ascending, we're going to sort that actor sheet cell 8 and the sort column. Remember, 8's our first row of data here. We've already defined the sort column, so we know. And we're, we're simply going to run a line of code ascending if it's ascending or descending if it's descending. So here we can sort based ascending or descending on these two lines of code. The range won't change regardless. That range is going to be based on the active sheet. Our starting position is going to be on row 8, column 13. Our last position is going to be based on the last row. Remember, excluding the totals row and the last column. This is our range. And then we're simply going to apply that sort. And that is going to automatically sort this based on this. So that's how we do it. Okay, great. So we've got apply sort. We just run report. On this macro, we're simply going to select something else and we're going to run the run application start. It's going to turn on screen updating. Okay, very good. That's how we run the report refresh. So that's going to include report refresh. That is the last macro that we had to run as far as this brand new cover sheet. Now, you notice a lot of things happening on selection change, right? When I make a selection change here or here or here or here, lots of things happen. We've been over most of the macros, but let's go in this selection change event and see what we're doing on that sheet and see how to make all this action happen. Okay, so the best thing is we're going to focus on now. Keep in mind that we have multiple sheets report template. Let's just escape out of there and we'll go back in here. So I've got report template one, template two, but basically these are the templates. So these have all the same code. We'll focus on this, but all three have the same code. And basically that means that when we duplicate this reports template sheet, all the code inside the sheet gets duplicated. So that means the code here, the code here and the code here are all exactly the same because the sheet gets duplicated. So there's no difference. So we don't need to go over the code in each individual sheet. We just need to look at one. So we'll go with the orders, but they're all the same. Okay, so inside this sheet, we're going to uh, dimension the report column is long, the header row is long, and the criteria row is long long. Okay, so we're going to focus, why don't we focus on the worksheet change event. When we make a change on filter criteria, we want something to happen, right? When I make a change here, this kind of change here, that's a change. What do I want to happen? Well, I want to filter based on work orders. So that's going to be a change event based on this row here. So we're going to take a look. If we user makes a change to M7 to AZ7, so based on this row here, starting at N, M7, right? We, we've hidden a display column. If we show it, we can see. So if it's really M7 through A7, then I want something to happen, right? And I want to make sure that it can, it does not contain the word interfilter, right? If it's interfilter, that's VBA putting that in. We don't want anything to happen if it's interfilter. So anything other than this text, then we want to run a filter. Okay, so when the user has been a change, as long as it doesn't say enter filter, then we're going to dimension the header name as a string, the database sheet as a string, and the field type as a string. Field type is very important, and I'll go over why that's important. Okay, so I also want to know the column in which the user is making the change. What column have they made change? I want to put that into a variable. So that target column is going to go to a variable called report column. I also want to know the report header row. What row is it on? The target column minus six. And that basically is I want to know this column right here. So if they've made a change to column 13, I want to put number seven and I want to have that row seven. So we're subtracting six to get this row right here. I'm going to put that inside a variable called report header row. Now what I want to make sure that there is actually a filter. So I want to make sure that they have had filter here. So if I 
and the row doesn't equal that check mark, then the user is not requesting to make a filter change, we can exit the sub, right? Only those that are checked are we gonna be running that filter by. So if I, the report row, equals empty, exit on no filter set. Okay, so we wanna set the header name. What's gonna header name? That's gonna be based on D. In this case, I wanna know the actual database header, not necessarily the header on the report. So D is gonna extract that. I'm putting that into a variable called header name. I also wanna know what field type. It's very important because when we're filtering uh, dates, numbers, and percentages, it's very different than we're we're going to be filtering text. If it's a text, I want partial, meaning like if they just type in work and not work order, I wanna make sure always have that available. So the type, the type of field really is important for that. So let's take a look inside the variable. So we wanna make sure to put that type that's coming from column F into a variable. Now the database sheet, I wanna put that in E2, making sure that we have that. Also, what I want to do is I want to determine the criteria column. What is the criteria column? I want to find that. And how are we going to do find that? It's going to be in the database sheet. So where's our criteria? If we take a look inside here, and we look all the way here, it's going to be starting in BA all the way on row two, all the way up. But I want to want to do is I want to look for that header. I want to find out what column. I need to know what column to place that order ID. For example, if I decide that I'm going to look only for ID number seven, I want to know what column to place that in. So if we take a look, I want to know what, it's not seven amount, but that's fine, it doesn't matter. Just put in the general, but either way. So I want to make sure that I know what column. So I'm going to look for ID, I'm going to determine what column it's in, then inside row three, I'm going to place that seven. However, if it is a text string, what I want to do is I want to put the asterisk before and after it. So how would I do that? So if I refresh the report and I put in order type and I put in work, that means I want to look for any work order type that contains the word work. So how do I do that? In that case, what I want to do is I want to put the asterisk before and after it. Because it's a string, I want to make sure that we're looking for even partial matches. However, numbers, percentages, and amounts and dates, have, dates would have less than or equal, numbers, percentages, and amounts all would be exact match. So we're gonna differentiate what we put in here based on the type. We're gonna moving forward. So the criteria column equals zero, we can exit sub. We don't know what column. We're gonna look for that. I wanna look for it. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the name of the header. I need to know what column it's in. Is, and once it's been found in row three, we are going to put, if it's a text, type field, if it's a text type field, we're going to put this. I want to put the asterisk before and after. That wildcard character is going to be based on the target value. I want it uh, before and after, and that means any partial match will return. However, else, let's just put in number, percentage, or amount. These types of fields, I want exact set criteria for number, I guess I have it here, or date, date wouldn't be in, date would not be in there because date was treated differently. So how do we do that? So we can simply put in the exact amount, no asterisk, no wild cards before or after. Okay, if the target value equals empty, then what we're gonna do is simply put in enter filter. So what does that mean? That means if I decide that I'm going to clear that out, I wanna put work and I use delete, then I wanna put that default text enter filter in here. And we can do it here and here, both it's gonna do enter filter. So, so even just deleting what you have here, it's gonna put in that default text enter filter. So if the target value equals empty, then set the default filter on cleared criteria. And then we're simply gonna run the macro that we already know, report refresh. So after we have that criteria, it's setting up. So that's gonna set up our filter. So that that's how we automatically can change it based when the user makes a change in here, it automatically runs the filter. Once we have added the criteria here, everything else is fine. So that's all we have to do. So pretty relatively simple on that. Okay, continuing on, that's going to be done on worksheet change. So only, only events on worksheet change. There's a lot of things that happen on selection change, right? So if we take a look inside our report here, we've got display columns, filter by, sort by, and total. All of that is on selection change. Only this is on worksheet change. So let's look into some of the work and macros that go into selection change. First of all, if the user makes a selection of large, then exit the sub. That means if they select any more than one cell, exit the sub, and I like that much better. So you always wanna write that into your code. It just makes it easier. That way we can demonstrate things and select a large number of cells without anything happening. Okay, so we're gonna dimension the calendar as a shape. This is for our calendar. Now remember, we've created this pop-up calendar, 
and I want to make sure that we have that calendar. Now I've got other videos that are more specific on this, but basically when I select this calendar, I want that date to appear directly inside B. So what I want to do is create a macro that when I make a selection on that, it's going to create that. Okay, so but we need that calendar and making sure that that calendar exists. If not, it's going to replace it. This is simply a macro. We're not going to get into it. There's a lot of macros in this pop-up calendar, so we're not going to go over that. That's just a feature, but you can download that and, and look through it because that's not specific to this training. Okay, but what is specific to this training is making sure that we have that calendar. If it's visible, we're going to hide it. And that means that if I've displayed it, but I select anything else, I want that calendar to be hidden. So we're running a macro to hide that calendar. Okay, so we're going to make sure that we check for sheet. This is simply going to make sure a macro that's part of the, the pop-up calendar to make sure that we have that calendar sheet. This pop-up calendar sheet is very important, contains the formulas. All right, continuing on. So what else do we have on the selection change event? We're going to focus on display columns. When I select or unselect display column, I want to hide or show a column based on a selection change in column H. So if the user makes a selection change from H7 to H300, and I want to make sure that D is not empty, making sure, because if they make a selection here, here, D is empty, so there's nothing we can do only when they make a selection change on a, a specific row that contains a value do I want to make sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off uh, application screen updating and calculation and all that. And of course, we'll restart it before we end. Continuing on, what I want to do is I want to determine the report column. What is the column? It's going to be the target row plus six. We already understand that the relationship between the columns here and the rows here. We've been over it a few times already. I want to know the target value. If it is character 252, that means it's currently selected. If it is currently selected, we know it's currently visible. When we need to hide the column. If there's nothing there, we need to show the column. So we know that if, if, if it's currently a check mark, we need to hide the column. So the first thing I, what I want to do is that target, that cell, I want to clear the contents, clear the check mark, clear check mark. Now we know that that check mark is character 252 based on the Wingdings font. And also what I want to do is I want to make sure that that, if it's, I want to make sure that this header row here is hidden. I want to make sure this shape is hidden. That shape is basically report header and the row that's associated with that. So to do that, we're simply, we've already know the row. So how do we know that? It's a target row. So the shapes report header row dot visible equals false. So this is going to hide the header shape, hide header shape. This is a massive training. Okay. Make sure you subscribe, click that like button. That helps us out a lot. Don't forget to comment below. I always want to hear your ideas questions and feedback. I'm here for you. Let me know what kind of trainings you would like to see or any feedback on the training. Okay, so the next thing what we're going to do is I want to make sure that that column is also hidden. Whatever column is associated, that column is hidden. So if I unselect that, I need to make sure that we hide column M. So we know the target column. We've already determined it. So now we're simply going to say row one, the report column, row, the row doesn't matter in this case, the report column, the entire column hidden equals true. So we're going to hide report Okay, I'll call them. Okay, that's great. That's all if we we're going to hiding. But what about if we're displaying the column? If we're displaying the column, we're going to do the complete opposite. We select it. We want that check mark to go in here. We want that header shape to become visible. We want that column to become visible. So we're going to do all those things. That target, that check mark is going to be placed. So we're going to place that check mark. Okay, once we check, add that, we also want to hide the column. So to do that, the same thing, but this time entire column hidden equals false. We're going to show that column. And also what I want to do is I want to reset the display here. But in case the width has changed, not only do I want to show the header again, I want to make sure that that header shape, that shape is also in the right place, in the right position, and the right size. So to do that, we're just going to double check it to make sure it is. So we're going to focus on the report header and the target row. This is the header shape, that header shape. So with that particular header shape, we're going to set the left position based on uh, row six and the report column. We're going to set the top position based on row six and the top position. We're going to set the height to make sure it's the same height as the cell. The width is the same width of the cell and visible is true. This just makes sure that the header is exactly equal to that cell. So basically this header here, I've selected cell M6. We know that this header shape is directly over it. It's the same width as column M. It's the same height as row six. So it's got all that and it's tied exactly in the same upper left position. So it's basically encompassing that entire cell. It mimics the cells, what we want to do. 
Okay, great. And then so we're going to run that called report update column headers. Once that done, we've already been over this, I believe. Let's go ahead and take a look at this inside the definition there. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this inside the definition there. This button, report have all column headers. We want to make sure that we're reporting all of the column headers. We've already been over that. So I just want to make sure that we are updating all these column headers based on this just to just to ensure that everything got the same okay so that's all then all we're going to select b2 this just select something else and then we're going to turn on screen updating so that's all we have to do okay so that is going to cover display and hide columns what about filter by now we've already covered the macro that filters but what happens when i make a selection change on filter by well that we're going to go over right now if the user makes a selection change from i7 i300 and d contains a value we know we're going to check to make sure that we have a filter. Now, the only kind of rule that I want is I only want to make, because we only have one type of, of date field here, date filter, I only want the user to be able to filter by one date at a time. So now in other types of trainings, maybe we can add multiple date filters, but it got kind of complicated. It's already complicated enough. So notice we have order date or due date. So if the user selects due date, that's fine. We can sort by due date. I just want to let them know that we're going to unselect the order date. So only one day filter can be used within a report. Now I'm going to change that to date. It should be date, not day filter. So we're going to let the user know through, uh, through visible just to make sure that we have that. So filter by, we need to check for other date filters. So we're going to determine the last header rows long, the header row, and the selected row. The selected row is simply going to be the target column. I want to do is I want to check for the visible column. What does that mean? H in the select row. I want to make sure that if we add, if let's say this is not visible, but we decide that we're going, let's do this one here. Let's say this one here. Let's say order date is not visible. No, I want to do status. Status is not visible, but I try to add a filter. I want to let the user know, hey, you can't add a filter to this because the column is not displayed. Please make sure the column is visible by checking display column before adding a filter to this column, right? So first we display it, then we add the filter. So I want to make sure it goes in that order. So we do want to run that check. If H is empty, meaning it's not visible, let's just put not visible, let the user know with a message box. By checking the display column, you saw the message. Okay, continuing on. So we want to make sure before I add a filter. I want to determine the last header row based on column D. We went over that. I want to check for multiple date figures. Here's where we go. So if F and the selected value row does not equal date, we don't need to check. In other words, we don't need to check if this is not date, if they add it here, we don't need to check. I only want to check it when they're checking or unchecking this date here. I only want to check. So what I want to do is if they've added a date filter, but there's another date item check, then I want this message box to appear. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to run a loop. For the header row equals seven to the last row. If F in the header row value equals date and H, I, and the header row equal care 252, and the header row equals the selected row, the multiple dates filter found. Now, what does that mean? Let's spell that right. How do we know that? So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for its date. Yes, its date. Yes, it has a filter. And yes, this row is not the same. This row is not the same as this one, right? So it's looping through these, and you see that this is a filter, right? Row 8 also is selected and also has a filter and it's also date. So once we find the same that's also checked, we need to let the user know. So how do we do that? That's a different type of, of date. So how do we do that? So we're gonna check there. Only one date, let's put in this, change this, date filter can be used within a report. Okay, so then we're just going to simply select it and we're going to end it. Just letting the user know. That's all I really need to do in that case, just letting them know. Okay, so we're just going to loop letting them know why we're unselecting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect the one that's been found, the previous date filter. We're simply unselecting that by clearing the contents out. And basically what that means is notice that this date filter has a filter on it, right? So if I select this date filter, what I want to do is give them the warning here and then unselect the old one. Click OK and unselect. Notice the other one got unselected, so it's no longer date. Great, so that's all we have to do. Now, that's just for checking for multiple date figures. Now what I'm going to do is are we hiding or are we showing the filter? If the target currently equals that checkbox, we know we need to hide the filter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear that checkmark out using target clear content. And then what I want to do is I want to determine is it a date filter or not? If it's a date filter, let's remove this. What do I need to do? If it's a date filter, I want to basically hide this, this shape right here. This shape called date filter group, I need to hide that. So that means if it's a selected here, so let's take a look inside our data. 
unselecting this, we want that shape to hide, right? There's no more date filter. So I'm gonna take that if, here it is right here, if the character, then we're gonna clear the contents, if range F and the value equals date. So if it's a date type here, then we're going to take shapes date filter equals visible. Hide the date filter shapes. Else show the filter. Else we're going, this is only if it's a date. Then else if the target filter, we're going to basically add that checkbox to the filter. And then only if it's a date are we going to show that grape. So when we select that date again, I want to then show that based on the user selection. So we're here, we're showing that, that date filter. Okay, very good. So we understand that. Then all we're gonna do is select and report set up filter. This macro we already went over. We know how to run those filters, but we didn't know up until that point. So that's how we do it. So that's once we do that, then everything's gonna be updated on all of our filters, which we went over already. Okay, very good. So that's how we do as far as the filter by, but what about sort on default sort? Now sort is right here. If the user makes a selection change in Inside column J, there's something that we want to do. Now we already went over the macro to sort, but we need to go over the selection change work that we're going to be doing inside this page here. Okay, so let's see how that works. So we're going to focus on this time column J. If the user makes a selection change in column J and D doesn't contain is not empty. So we're going to dimension the current sort as a string and the sort by range as a string. And why is that important? Basically, when I do what I want to do is I want to have three different options here. If it's currently sorted ascending, I want to make it descending. If it's currently descending, I want to make it empty. So there's three options here. If it's empty, ascending, ascending, make it descending. And if it's descending, make it empty. So there's three, going to be three options here. So we're going to do that. So I need to know the current value, right? What is the current value? Because that's going to be determined what, what we put there. So we're going to set the sort by as a range of the target, okay? So the current sort equals the sort by value. So what is the current value of the current cell? There's a few ways to do that. So I want to make sure to put these into variables. I want to know the sort by, that's a that's the specific cell. The sort by is a range, dimension of range up here. I think I mentioned it here under the selection change. Oh, here it is, sort by is a range. Okay, so that's going to be the target. And then, of course, the string is going to be the sort by. That's the current value in the current cell. We're putting those into variables. That's important to put them into variables because I'm clearing everything out. And I, want, I need to remember what was there before. The reason is we only want one sort by column at the same time. Notice there's only one at a time. So it's important when we select something, to clear everything out first, clearing everything out. So I want to remember what cell was selected, and I also want to know what value was there before it was cleared out. So that's why we're putting it into variables. So now we can determine, instead of saying active cell value because we just cleared it out, if the current cell, current sort equals empty, then make it ascending. If the current, current sort was ascending, make it descending. And if the current uh, sort is descending, then make it nothing by clearing the contents out. So that's all we have to do in this B cell, B2 select, just selecting something else, and then running the macro report sort, which we already went over how to actually sort that. Here also we have totals by. So what is the total by as far as the last one on selection change? Now we went over the macro of how to add those totals, but remember here's when we take the action. When we run that totals by, I want something to happen. It's relatively simple. All we're gonna be doing is simply adding a checkbox or removing the checkbox based on the current value. So if the user makes a selection of K, column K, K through 300, the, the, and we wanna make sure there's a value in D, then if the target value equals character 252, then clear the contents, else simply add 252. So this is simply going to add or remove the checkbox based on whatever is there. We're gonna select something else just to get out of that cell, and then we're gonna just run the macro that's gonna update the totals. Now that macro we have already been over. Very good, that's gonna cover it for the selection change and worksheet event change on the screen. Now we've got a few macros on report sheet. Now if we see we have edit mode open and edit mode closed. These are the ones that we say finish editing, it's gonna close, we wanna hide those columns, and a macro that says edit mode so we can open that. Let's go over those macros, they're relatively simple. So for edit mode open, when I edit mode is that button here, I've got, let's go ahead and close it out so we can see that button. I'm gonna reduce this, finish editing. So there's a macro that's tied to this edit report. If I select on the individual slips, click assign macro, remember it's group, and we see that it's edit mode open. Now we have the name of this group shape. Here it's called edit, let's take a look inside of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel this out. I'm gonna go here to edit report. This is called edit report button. So when I click it, I want this button hidden. 
I don't want this whole section to show up. Now, I've got a group of buttons inside the edit mode, reset report fields, which will help us reset it back to the way it was the database. And this is called edit group. So I want to make sure that edit group is displayed. And I also want to make sure that columns C through K are displayed as well. So to do that, the first thing we edit mode, B1 equals true. I want to set the edit mode to true. Now, this is important here because when I, I'll, I haven't showed you the drag and drop, but it's important when we select on edit mode. When we're in edit mode, we want the user to give the ability to drag and drop and move columns. However, when we're not in edit mode, when we're finished editing, I don't want the users to have that ability. Notice they can't select it, right? If they, there's nothing they can do here. And I really, that's really important. So I need to differentiate between those two modes. And there's a cell B, let's take a look here, B1 that's going to do that for us. So we unhide it. So look, edit report is going to go to true. If we finish editing, it's going to go to false. So B1 is going to tell us. So I want B1 to change based on whether we're in edit mode or not. So B1 is going to go to true when in edit mode. I also want to hide columns C through K. I want the edit group visible to be visible. That's this group that you saw right here, this group of shapes. I want that visible. And I also want to hide the report button, MSO visible. That's that button that was right here. What about on close? On close, we're doing just the opposite. We're going to set B1 to false, no longer in edit mode. Range C through K, the entire column hidden equals true. Edit group shape visible equals false. So we're going to edit the group shape, right? That group is, is going to be hidden. That edit those three buttons here we want to hide that and i want to show that other button which is going to be edit that edit report button that's going to be visible so we're going to show that button so that's all we have to do on those macros we already went over these two macros i also want to go over with you how to drag and drop these particular shapes so now when i click on here if you remember we can change the order simply by moving it around how do we do that well there's just really two macros that were associated with that one macro is when i select a shape it's going to happen now for an edit mode it's false nothing's going to happen and we're going to use these cells here so when i make a selection i want to know the name of that shape i want to put it here i want to know the left position of that shape and i want to know the uh, top position and i want to know if it's been moved or not yet okay so that's what's going to happen on on when we select it so let's take a look inside the macro now that's a macro that's, that's the same macro that's been assigned to this sample shape so when i duplicate this sample shape here it is the same macro that gets associated so what is that macro here so if we click assign macro we see it's called report header selection edit sort so we're going to select that and it's going to go to called report sorting total macros it's also a macro that's going to sort it is the same macro so remember, we went over this report sort. We went over this how to sort it. But if you remember, when we select it, so there's this particular, this very cool macro does two things. One, it sorts it. And two, it also allows us to drag and drop. So there's a few things happening here. How do we do that? The first one is going to be sort. When I select it, I want it sorted based on that. How do I know that? Well, all I need to do is determine what column here, this is column seven. And how do I know that? Because it says it right here. It is row, row seven, excuse me, row seven. So I know it's here. So I know which one to mark. So let's take a look inside this select to sort. This is the macro that's assigned to every single one of these header shapes. So to do that, we're going to determine the active shape. We're going to fix that sort row. What is the row? I need to know this row, 7 through 19. If it's due date, I need to know that it is, here it is right here, report header 14. There's a macro that's running. That's why you don't see this. If I press pause on it or stop on it, stopping that macro, that's why you don't see it. Because when I select a header, something's running. Usually it's a loop. So here, now you can see it, report 14. That's why you couldn't see it before because it was looping. So 14, I need to know it's associated with this 14 due date. So what I want to do is I want to remove the word report header and I want to extract this row. To do that, we can use this here it's going to be based on the application caller so how do we do that not this one here this is where we're at so the sort row is going to replace the application caller is the name of the shape that called it the name of the shape that called that macro and what i want to do is i want to extract that row and i'm simply going to use that replace as we've been replacing the report header with nothing what that's going to do is leave us with the row if it's zero we're going to exit the sub so now what i want to do is i want to set the sort by what is it currently sorted that's very important what is the current sort? Because I know, notice that if it's currently descending here, notice it's currently descending, I need to know to make it ascending. 
right? If it's currently ascending, I need to make it descending. So I need to know, determine what is the current value. And the current value is always updated in J. So let's look in column J and see what it is. So we're going to determine the current sort is whatever's in column J. So now we can clear out J. I want to just clear out column J entirely because we're going to reset the sort. So it's important. If the current sort is empty or the current sort is descending, then we're going to make it ascending. I guess that's what it is. I can't forget. I can't remember always what this is, but you can get it basically the opposite. So if it's empty, let's see here. Let's make it empty. Okay. So now it's empty here. And now what we want to do is we want to sort it. So if it's empty or it's descending, we are going to make it ascending right? if it's empty. So that's in this case. So if it's empty or descending, then we're going to make it ascending. If it's descending, we're going to make it ascending. So that's the, we're going to set the sort by value. Sort by value is already here. The value of this cell, we've already set the cell. This is a range, sort by the range. So we're setting this range here, and then we're going to change the value of this range based on whatever the current sort is. So that's all we have to do. And then we're just going to run the macro report sort. So that's all we have to do for the sort section. So we've already run the sort. Remember, the sort is down here. We've already run that macro. And that's going to sort based on this. So all we need to do, again, is just determine the row and then change the value. Relatively simple on this. Everything else is the same. So that's for the sort. But what about everything else is focused on how or when we're in the selection move? So how do we do that? So when we're in selection, everything else here is based on moving this. So when I select it, I want something to happen. I'll, not only do I want it to sort, but what else do I want to happen? I want to put whatever the name of the shape is. I want to put the left position, the top position, and move to false. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need to know if the user moves it, where are they moving it to? I need to make sure that they're changing that. And I need to know if it's been moved or not. Setting the current left and the top position will let me know if it's been moved. So that's what we're going to do here. B1, all right? Now also, remember, I also want to know when we're finished editing, I don't want the user to be able to move any columns. So if B1 is false, we're not selecting the shape. Notice that the shape is not selected. However, when I select edit report, B1 is selected and it's ready to be moved. So that means if B1 does not equal true, we're not in edit mode, then exit the sub. Exit when not in edit mode. So that way users, normal users cannot move or rearrange a column. Only admins can or only when in edit mode can you rearrange the columns. And I think that's fair. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to put the name of that shape, whatever called it, I want to put that directly in B11. So B11 is going to take on application call it. And this is the name of the shape they called it. And notice when I type nothing's happening, I need to stop that code because that loop is running. And when I select the shape, that loop is running. Okay, so name of shape. Okay, so now B12 is going to take on the left position of that shape. B13 is going to take on the top position of that shape. And B14 is going to set to false. And I'll show you why that's important. I also want to make sure that it's on top of everything else. And why is that important? Because when I drag a shape over, I want to make sure that this shape is on top of every other shape. So that's very important. So when it's on top of every other shape, I'm going to set the Z order to that. So we're going to set the Z order to bring to front. That means the select the shape is going to be on top. And I also want to select that shape. Notice when I select it, it selects the shape. That's a, that gets it ready to be moved. That's important. Remember, the code is running now. So loop, you won't know that until we go over the next part of the code. But there's something running now. This is what's running now. Something called header check for move. So as soon as we select it, some code's going to run. That code, we're going to look at it right now, called header check for move. So that one is right down here header check let's i'm not sure where it is header check for move it's kind of a big application here it is it's in column organizing it's in module it's big module called column organizing so it's called header check for move and basically what this is going to do is going to run a loop and it's going to continue looking for it for a while for 1000 milliseconds or whatever it is or 100,000 milliseconds, and it's going to basically wait for the user to possibly make a move. And if they haven't made a move in a certain amount of time, it'll go back to false. So that's what's going to happen now. So we're going to count delay. We need to run a count. We need an original column. We need the destination column. I need to know where it currently is and where they have moved it to. So all of those things are very important. We're going to need that. We need the last column, last row. We'll go over these variables as we go into it. So this is an extra long training for you in this Merry Christmas time. Merry Christmas to everyone. And happy holidays. Happy New Year too coming up. Okay, if B11 equals empty, then exit the sub, right? If there's no shape, right, we can exit the sub. We're focused on the selected shape. If this 
this is empty, there's nothing we can do. So we can move on. I want to determine the last column. What is the last column? Application worksheet function based on M, right? What is the, I need to know the last column all the way from M. So what's the last column of data? We're going to run that and get that into a variable. That last column is going to be based on count A, M through AZ. Now, we, these contain spaces. I just need to know the last column. If we're going to be uh, looping through that, I need to know the, what is the last column. So, and this last column is 25. So, I also want to know the last row. What is the last header row? It's going to be based on column D, right? So, here is our last header row, which is 19. So, we've gone over that before. Setting that header shape. What is that header shape? Based on B11. I want to put that into a shape. This is a shape here. Header shape as a shape. So once we have that header shape, it's going to be based on whatever the values in B11. I also want to know the original header row. What is the original row that's located? If they've moved this, right, the original header row is 7. So if I remove the report header, and it's going to leave me with 7. Again, we can do that same line of code. We're just replacing it, removing header, replacing it with nothing. That's going to get us that row. I want to know what the original order was. What is the order of that? How do I know the order? It's based in column G. I know this is 1, 2, and 3. So if I know the row, and I know the, the, the order then. So we're going to put that into a variable. So the original order is based on what is in G and the original header row. That's the original order where it's located. I also want to know the original column. What is the original column? It's the, it's the header row plus 6, right? So if this is 13, and we know that this is 7, so we just simply add 6, is going to get us 13. So we know the original column. If we select it, I want to know what. Why is that important? Because if I move it here, I need to know to put the customer name. I need to replace these columns. I need to know to put the customer name in that column and put the status in this column. So we're simply replacing the columns. So that's kind of important to know the original. So we need to know the original column. Okay, now we're going to run our count. This is going to add that delay and let give the user time to move that column. Once they select it, we need to give them a certain amount of time to move it. And that is what that delay is for. And now you notice, so I can't type, so I'm going to stop that delay, right? It's going to go on for some time. We're going to trap errors with on air resume next. And then, of course, we're going to set B14 to true, then end, right? Excuse me. If B14 value equals true, then end. That means we're going to end. So that means as soon as a user makes a change, we're going to set this to true. When we set this to true, it's going to get out and exit that loop. We need to have a way out for the loop. Anytime we do do events or count, a large count delay, Maybe if the user makes a change before this count ends, I need to wait to get out of the loop. So as soon as they make a change, we're going to set B14 to true. As soon as we do that on any kind of a change, we are then going to be able to exit out of this loop. Okay, there's two things that can happen. One, the user can, let's uh, show this. Let's show this one, customer name. There's two things that can happen. If they want to hide it, they can drag this particular column here, and it's going to hide that column. It's kind of, it's the same thing as unselecting here. So it's kind of just a different way to do it. So basically what I want to know is, one, did they move it inside this section how do we know it's going to be inside this section well i would know if the if the moving that shape if that shape is above row two and less than row four and either inside columns j or k then i know it's inside this section so we're going to check for that first but first i want to know has it been moved at all how do i know it's been moved but i'm going to check the current position if the current left position is different than what's in b12 or the current a uh, top position is less than B13, then I know it's been moved. So we have this. So that if the current if the current left position does not equal B12 or the current top position does not equal B13, we know it's been moved. Shape has been moved. Shape has been moved moved. So now what I want to know is where has it been moved to? Has it been moved to this little area? If it's been moved to this little area, then we need to remove that particular column. So let's going to check on that first. Check for column removal. If the left position is greater than row one, greater than row one, we're just looking, excuse me, greater than, greater the left position is greater than I. This is an I actually, column I, the left position, right? So it's greater. So here's column I. We know it's to the right of this. I also need to know if it's to the left of column L, to the right of column I, or to the left of column L. We're going to check the left position. So left position is greater than, than I, and also the left position is less than L. So we know that. Now we need to check for the top position. Is the top position less than row 2, or is it greater than row 5? If it is, then we know it's been moved to that. So as long as all those things happen. So has the top position, is it greater than row 2's top position? 
and we're using and not or and the top position is less than row five top position we know the column center we know that they've moved it inside that little box area so they can move it so what are we going to do now we're going to first set b14 to true that's going to exit the loop then all we need to do is determine the original column minus six now what is that original column here we're going to select it on h and what that's going to do is just simply is going to select it we know it's visible so when we select it it's automatically going to be hidden so again if i want to remove customer name all i do is here it's going to simply unselect h in that row and it's going to be gone if i select it again it's going to show up that's all we have to do and this is going to we're going to exit the sub then end is simply going to end that and exit out of that sub now what i want to do is i want to check for another move now, but now i want to make sure that they've moved it right if they take this column and they move it somewhere up here i need to let them know that's not really a right place to move it please move the header to a correct position so we want to make sure that it's within range of the certain headers so to do that we're going to check so if the header shape the left position is greater than column l meaning it's it's left of that right greater than column l greater than and the header shape is less than cell one and we know i want to make sure that it's the correct move so it has to be inside it has to be greater than this to the right of this it has to be less than the header let's go to the top position the left position less than the last column minus one plus one so all the way to the last column i want to make sure it's in so if they try to select let's say balance and they move it way over here we know that that's not a right place so in that case we're simply going to refresh the data and go back in there so but if it's inside that range we're going to check to make sure but what if it's inside the correct area the top position is less than row nine the top position is greater than two so it's somewhere in the area then we're going to replace the column we're going to move it so we know we've moved it to a correct place so how do we replace that column well the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to set b14 to true that's going to exit out of the loop make sure it doesn't continue looping we're going to set that destination column where do we want to move that to well that's going to be the column right if i take this shape and i move it here i want to know what the top left cell column is of its current position the top left cell column of the current position is the column we're going to move it to that's the destination column i also need to know what the destination row is what is the row what is the header row here so it's that destination column minus six meaning if they've moved it to column 14 i want to know subtract six and we've got eight we know we're, the destination row is here it's the order date so i know that we're going to replace customer name and order date so changing it from one to the other so i need to know the destination row too so we're going to put that into the row here so i also want to know what the order is what is the current order is it order two right if i know that it's current my current order is one and i replace it i need to know to replace two and one right if i change these two these two here i need to know to switch them from two to one and one to two just like we did here so now order date is first and name is second so we're going to get that destination order and that's going to be there so now what i want to do is i want to replace it right so one becomes two becomes one and one becomes two two this moves to two and this moves to one now why does it then we'll, again of course we're going to sort it based on the number we're always going to sort it after that so the destination so g of the destination header takes the destination order number excuse me here g and the destination order row takes the original order so we're simply replacing the destination to the original and g and the original header row so basically all we're doing is we're just switching these we're, whichever one we drag we're just changing from two to one and one to two we're just switching them up here changing that order okay now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off screen updating application up then what we're going to do is we're going to run the macro to update the column headers this updates the column header we already went over that macro as soon as we change these numbers all we need to do then is resort these which is going to be taken care of inside this macro which we already over reset up our filters re-update we've already been over all these macros update the database and refresh the report so the important thing that we need to know is here is one when we make a change when we make this change what is the order what is the destination order and what is there switching four to one one to four then the rest of the macros will automatically so the important thing is just changing these orders changing these numbers that's why these numbers are so important because we know which ones to interchange them with so that's all we have to do but what if it's an incorrect move so remember we're if it's a correct move we're going to end we're exiting out right here anything else is going to be an incorrect move we're going to let the user know please move header to a correct position 
We're going to update all the column headers. We're going to run on that macro that's going to update all the column headers because I want them right back. Let's say, you know, because if, if they've moved this way over here, I need to let the user know to say, you know, it's a wrong position. I need to reset that, that header back to its correct place. So that's going to do right there. I'm sure we can make this a lot fast. Okay, great. So that's it. So that's all we have to do for the column headers. Let's see what else we have. Okay, inside the report filter refresh, this one, we went over refresh report. We want to go over clear filter. Now, the clear filter, that's the one that's simply been tied to this button here. That is the macro that runs. When I click clear filter, basically what I want to do is I want to clear all the criteria associated with this, and any filters get automatically cleared. So to do that with the active sheet, I need to know, again, the last report header row, just as we did before. We're going to loop through them. I need to know the database sheet, and if the last report header row is less than seven, we're going to exit the sub app. We're going to turn off screen updating application doing all that we're going to run a loop for the report headers to the last report headers. i need to know which ones are filters and i need to clear those out so we're going to check i'm going to look in column i i need to know which ones contain filters and if they do what i want to do is i want to clear them out so to make sure that so if i equals 252 then we're going to put contains filter contains Okay, so now that we know it contains a filter, I want to set the field type because that field type is very important. If it's a date, we're going to do one thing. If it's anything else, we're going to do something else. So setting that field type is going to come from column F. F is always has that, that uh, filter type is there, which is going to tell us what to do. So if it's a date, then what are we going to do? If it's a date, then I'm going to set, I'm just going to set the default B6. I want to set it to a large date. So I put 2020 to 2030. So basically, I'm just going to set this one for B6 to a very early date and b7 to a very late date encompassing all the data and that's where i get these numbers 43831 so that's just the numerical value of those dates so set to january 1st 2020 any early date, so that's fine. Just setting those dates. What if it's a not a date? If it's not a date, I want to clear out. First of all, I want to take whatever's inside that filter, and I want to put the words enter filter. We also have to go over conditional formatting too. So what we're going to do is we know the report had a row plus six. We know so if it's seven, if this is seven, we know it's thirteen. We know the column is thirteen. So seven is where we have seven is the row. So we're going to put enter filter for each one of these. If it's not a date, we're going to put enter filter there. So we're going to loop through that putting the words enter filter. I also need to know the header name. What is the name of the header? That's gonna be in based on D, very important. I wanna make sure that we're looking for that. Okay, so I wanna clear out what's in the criteria column. If we look in our database, I also want to find out, I wanna look for that in, if it's anything like order type or status, and I wanna find that and clear out whatever values are here to make sure. So how do we know we need to find the column? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search all of this row, and I'm gonna look for that header, and if, if it's found, I'm gonna determine the column, and I'm gonna clear out whatever's in row three below that. That's gonna clear out that criteria. So if it, we're using find, of course, if it's not found, it could create an error. Therefore, we've wrapped it in on error resume next, and on error go to zero. So we're gonna set that criteria column based on the database sheet, BA2 through BZ, all that, that particular row, we're looking for the header name. If it's found, we're gonna return that column. And once that column is found, assuming it is not zero, we're simply going to clear that out. Row three, the criteria column, clearing out the criteria of that. So that's gonna clear it up. And we're simply gonna loop through those. And once that's all done, we're gonna run the report to, to refresh the filter, and then we're gonna turn on application screen updating and calculations and all that. So that's all we really need to do, just that small one to clear the filter. Now let's go over some of the conditional formatting. As we go into this orders report here, we see that we've got some conditional formatting. Now notice that when I've checked or unchecked that, that's going to go to gray. And then we also see that the odd rows are colored blue and the even rows are colored white. So how do we do that? We're going to go into the home and then conditional formatting. And we're going to go into the manage rules and we're going to take a look at that. And we've got three different rules. So the first one is if D7 does not equal empty, right? What does that mean? And that basically means that if D and any row is not empty, what I want to do is I want to make sure to give it that color. I want to give it that, that uh, dark font, okay? So if we take a look inside here, and what is that? Let's go ahead and format that. We see that it's just got basically this blue border. They're going to use these for the blue borders uh, below it. So I want that border color below it, giving it a blue border. So that's all that that one does is just simply add that border on. This one, however, what if it's an inactive? If it's an inactive, how do we know this? Two conditions. One, we want to make sure that D7 does not equal empty, meaning there's a value, not just seven, right? Any row 
Notice that the seven doesn't have the dollar sign below it. That means for any row within the range. Also, H7, H in that seven, does, equals empty. If H7 equals empty, it's not a column we're displaying. In that case, what I want to do is I want to give it that gray background. So if we go into the font, we see it's a lighter color gray font. And we also see that the fill has a gray fill color. So we've added just this gray fill color. And that's going to be for uh, non-visible uh, or hidden columns. We want to make sure to give it that color. Also, lastly, I want to color those even rows. So if we look in this rule, one, it's going to be two conditions. D and seven doesn't have to be, is not empty, right? I want to make sure it's value. And it's an even row. The mod of row two equals zero. Those means even rows. And what are we going to do with that? I'm going to give it that white color. So giving it that white background color. Inherently, it's got a blue background, but only for even rows, we're giving it that white background. So that's all we have to do for the conditional formatting here. Now we've got some conditional formatting here too. And we've also have totals. And we notice that totals are bold and underlined. How do we do that? And along with the conditional formatting. So we're going to click on here and we're going to run manage rules. And we're going to see we've got a, a few different rules here. So the first one is we're going to edit that rule. And this is for totals. And what I want to do is I want to check for a few things. One, I want to know if or either one of these conditions, the row contains the word totals or is a formula. Either one of those, if either one of those accurate is formula M8, that means for any cell in that range, if it equals the word totals in the colon or if it contains a formula, then we are, what we're going to do is we're going to give it that underline in bold. So we see here, we've got the border, we've got this uh, border above and below. The font here is bold. We see that the font, and we've got a double underline here. So that means for any cell that can either contains a formula or contains the word totals, we're then, that way we can format that based on that. So I like that, is formula, very cool. This contains a formula, nothing else contains a formula. That's why we can format these. And then the last one is the conditional formatting. And I told you that, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go into here, conditional formatting, back once again to showing you that last rule. And we're gonna edit this rule. Now, we're gonna say this one, I wanna make sure that M6 does not equal empty. What does that mean? Remember we put a space behind the header, only for the columns, I only want to basically highlight certain columns that contain the value. Z has, there's no space, but in row M, excuse me, in row six, all the way across behind these header shapes is that single space. So M6 does not, M, notice the dollar sign is not before M. That means for any column in the range on row six, row six is fixed. As long, if it's not empty, so we're gonna give it that color. And I want only for even rows, and I want to make sure that N through Z6 does not equal zero, does not equal zero. If we're counting all of that, that's going to make sure that we color those even rows only within that range. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't necessarily know if there's going to be data in here. So we can't use this because if it's empty, we still want to color it. So we know that it's calm. And so we're going to count everything from here to make sure that all of this and only the even rows all the way through here are colored. Wow. Very, very cool. Let's take a quick look and see what we've been over. We understand that now we can create right-click functionality. All we need to do is just click on any table or database, create that report. What it's going to do is going to duplicate this report template, and it's going to create a brand new sheet based on that template with all the features there. And it's going to create additional orders uh, based on all the headers, and then you'll be able to customize based on the header names. It's going to assume that we know what field types, although we can change them if we want. It's going to also add in the database sheet. You'll be able to customize your own report name, determining the first column, the required column, the last column, and the header row. We'll be able to set automated headers. We'll be able to display in high columns. We'll be able to add filters, both with regular filters and date-based formulas. We'll be able to do sort either by a single click, ascending or descending on the individual column, or we'll be able to click on the shape also, either way, to be able to sort descending or, or ascending, we'll be all, also able to add totals on a single click just by single clicking them. We're also going to be able to drag and drop columns simply by moving them over here to rearrange the column order very, very easily. We'll be able to clear the filter, refresh the report, and of course, we can drag and drop and hide columns if you want just simply by doing that. That's It's been an incredible training. This is, has been one of the best automated 
uh, reports that we've ever created. We've shown tons of features. We've added just about every kind of formula, function, VBA that we could possibly add in a single training. So it's been an epic. If you've stayed till the end, thank you very much for your time. I do really appreciate it. Please support this channel. Anything you can do, check out some of our great courses. I think that will really help you. We've also got the 250 pack. I've got the dashboard course, the mentorship course, an incredible course that shows you how to define, design, and deploy, de develop your own Excel-based applications for passive income. That I'm going to include the link down below. That's going to really help you out. Thank you very much. Please let me know what else you want to see on this. Join us on Patreon. I'll be over there with an additional training next week and a brand new workbook and an updated version on the training. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.